Transfer fees up. Season tickets up. High prices up. Why the blooming heck are you still up? Topical sport and debate worth staying awake for. The two mics. All night long. On Talk Sport. All night long. Now, the thing is, because I'm smart than the average bear, yeah. I've been driving around the countryside looking at farms. Yeah. And they produce an antibody called immunoglobulin E. Immunoglobulin E, right? Have you got that? No, I haven't got that. No, try it again. Immunoglobulin E. Okay. I'll say that again. Immunoglobulin E. I have this sort of infected personality, you know. Infective? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's one word for it. Well, I mean, no, what I'm up. saying is it's... Uh, no, that's the I'm wrong word, time. isn't it? Addictive. Yeah, look at the time. It's infectious, okay. infectious, that's what we're looking for. That's not it either. This is Talk Sport. We are the two Mikes, and it's time to say a very warm welcome uh, to Mr. Mike uh, Porky Parry, a man who I haven't seen uh, for just a couple of days. Mr. Parry, very good morning to you. And a very good morning to you, Mike. Good to see you again. I hope you got back from Newcastle OK. I did. Of course I did. You, it was uh, a bit of a torturous uh, long journey, but, uh, you know, yeah. it was fine in the end. I don't know why you take the torturous long journey. I just got on the train, yeah. settled into the first-class seat, a mm. couple of bottles of um, restorative fluid, right. and uh, whoosh, you know, the countryside whoosh. just uh, yeah, went no, flying past it the is, window. It is quite and, appealing. Uh, it is quite appealing, but the trouble yeah. is I have passengers to, to well, think about. Well, you do, yeah, uh, yeah And yeah, I have yeah. sort of bags and all sorts of things yeah, like yeah, that, and you, I've got to get from one place to another. You it's have responsibilities. It is complicated, I, I, yeah. I realise that. However, yeah. what a great place Newcastle was, eh? It was tremendous. It absolutely was tremendous. absolutely terrific, and I have to say that there's a bar there called the Shark Bar. There is. That's right the, opposite St James's Park. Well, well, I was going to say, that's the bar on the first floor of the Sandman Hotel. It's on the ground floor. A, a new one, on the ground floor, yeah. that's right, on the ground floor, and that's right opposite St James's Park. My bedroom window on the 10th floor... I felt like I could reach out of the window and touch the uh, Milburn stand. Mm. It's massive. I mean, until you've actually been up and seen that and stared up at it, it is huge stand. I never yeah. realised how, how, oh, how gigantic it was. And right, it's great to see a, a, a stadium that big right in the middle of the city. Well, well. that's right. Mm. I mean, it was a it was a five minute walk, literally, wasn't it, down the hill to the old uh, Tyne Opera House, one yeah. of the oldest theatres in the world. You say? Well, it's the oldest Victorian theatre in Britain, a working right? Victorian yeah. theatre. Yeah. yeah. But you know all about that, don't you? Because there was all yes. sorts of things going on after the show. Oh yeah. Uh, which I don't know whether you want to get to now. Oh, I think we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that a bit I later. Know, I'll talk about that later. Well, I mean, you did t- find yourself, unfortunately, trapped I did. in a tunnel. I was trapped. Yeah. Uh, but the start of the show was brilliant. I mean, tell the audience about my entrance onto the stage. Well, because it was such an old theatre, yes. uh, Porky decided in his wisdom to disappear below the stage, and I didn't even know he was going to do this. It's actually. nice. He decided right. to yeah. uh, disappear below the stage, and uh, as I walked onto the stage, waiting for him to walk on from the other side, as yes. you normally do, yes. uh, there was no sign of him, and I wondered what had happened. In fact, at that point, I thought maybe he had been locked in some room. Yes. And then... Uh, uh, remarkably, a trap door opened. Crashing. Uh, and you came out of the trap door. I did. Which I, was quite a remarkable entrance. I, I did. And then started singing Phantom of the Opera. Uh, it, it was like this. The porky of the opera is here tonight. That's, you're not going to sing the second line, of, obviously. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. no, no because it was rude. That, that would be, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. be too rude. But yeah, no, very good. Yeah. It was very good. And uh, the show went very well. It, it we did. We met a lot of people afterwards, which yeah. was very nice. I want to say thank you to everybody in Newcastle, both those who came to the show and the staff, of course, of the Tyne Opera House and the people who ran the Sandman. And I have to say that the lady waitresses in the Sandman are the best looking I've ever seen yeah. anywhere in the world. Yeah, you'd have to say that. And I've been travelling the world for 30 years mm. now, and they were delightful. Uh, three of them, at least, I nominated. Could very have been, helpful Could have well. been, uh, yeah, very helpful. Could have been Miss Will contestants, yeah. believe me. Yeah, they were beautiful. Yeah, they looked after wonderful. us very well. And we stayed there. I mean, you went to bed a little yeah. bit earlier than me. I did. Uh, as per usual. But because then you were I up do. earlier. I know you do. Um, because I look up, after uh, myself, and I don't, you know, I don't bladder it until 3.30am, which I think is a disgraceful um, way to... Uh, to end an evening, you know, in moderation, met all the guys in the bar at the Tyne Opera House after the show and, um, you know, very much enjoyed seeing everybody. It's great. But then you have to push it on and on and on to the state where you've been thrown out of bars at 3.30 well, in the morning. We weren't, I know, we weren't actually thrown out. What they said was we do have to close the place now. It was about 3, I think, or 2.30. Yeah. And so yeah. they said, well, if you'd like to go and retire into the uh, lounge uh, lobby, yeah. uh, where you're more than welcome to stay and continue drinking. That's what we did. And so that was quite amusing as well. So we got to watch an awful lot of people coming back from their night out. Yes. Uh, which did look a bit more like 
carnage than some of the other things we've yeah, seen. Yeah, I can imagine. And, mm. of course, of course, one of the reasons you were attracted to Newcastle, which you didn't tell me about until we got there, then I realised, yeah. was you realised it was the hen party no. capital of Britain. No, no, no. Yes, you Not did. True. All these hem parties Not all true. over the place. The ladies, these I don't realise how sophisticated hem parties are now. They all wear different sashes. So yeah. one says, I'm That's the not bride. not necessarily a sign of sophistication. Uh, the other, another one says, I'm the bridesmaid. Yeah. Another one says, I'm the mother of the groom. I'm the mother Those of the, the bride. Those are the ones that you were quite interested in. No, no, not at all, not at all. And I could see you focusing in. You, you found that you found that a, a woman-rich environment, no, I didn't. didn't you? Not yes, you did. No, I was, oh, I, yes, was, you did. I was merely talking to my daughter, yeah. Yeah. a couple of guys who uh, had stayed for a long time. Mm. Uh, one of them was from Edinburgh, mm. one was from Newcastle, mm. both of them called Mark. And, uh, you know, we had a very nice time. Yeah, well, you know, I see you had your eye on it. That, uh, you, you definitely uh, felt that it was, uh, you know, an advantageous area for the sort of uh, no, behaviour that you, uh, uh, that you uh, pursue. Uh, because I'm not joking, alley cat like behaviour, morals of alley cat like behaviour were in the air. Had I not kept a firm grip. Well, you didn't on, keep a firm uh, grip because you went to bed early, like yeah, the Scarlet Pimpernel, as uh, you normally do. Uh, uh, well, what do you mean by that? What well, do you mean by that? Well, because you disappeared after you got trapped in a locked tunnel. Yes. I never saw you. No, well, that's. I, I was trying to get out of the place. I yeah. mean, what happened was, I. Uh, I went uh, back to the dressing room because there was a guy there who wanted to interview me from the evening paper, you know, oh, yeah. and I said, fine, let's go somewhere it's quiet. And Why no didn't he want to interview all. you? I have no idea. I have no idea. Didn't he want to interview you? No, I didn't. he didn't no, ask me. Well, there you go. You see, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? So then I came back to the bar to find the bar shut. And uh, I could hear people talking behind the door, but the door was locked. Yeah. And I knocked on the door a few times. the wrong door. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I knocked on the door a couple of times. Well, he was still in the bar. Because well, when you rang yeah. to find, try and get yourself rescued, yeah. you were still in the bar. Yeah, well, well, well hang on. So you sure you weren't sort of uh, discombobulated? No, at no, point? no, no. I heard voices. I thought, I don't know what that is. That must be the staff of the theatre or something. Uh, they must have gone. Mm. So I then go to get out the front door, which is perfectly normal place where you exit a theatre, right, yeah. to find all the doors locked. Right. So I then thought, hang on, it looks like I'm locked in here. I've got to try and find somebody. So I rang the number of the theatre. Yeah. And the phone was ringing in front of me, you know, at the uh, reception <laughs> desk. Yeah, but there's nobody there. Right. So I then thought, right, this is easy. I'll go out through one of the um, fire exits. Yeah, you good have, idea. You have to have them yeah. in, in uh, theatres right. in case the place goes on fire. Yeah. And it is a very old theatre. It certainly is. There's lots of wood under the stage. Mm. Believe me, I know that when I was crawling around under the stage. Yeah. So I go through the fire exit out of the auditorium, you sure to me. Yeah. And you go down a tunnel. Yeah. And then at the bottom, there's the fire exit into the street. Yeah. Somebody had chained it. So it wasn't much of a fire exit, was it? not very safe, No, it? no, Isn't exactly. I don't think you should be saying this on the uh, well, radio. Well, OK, let's say it was an exit then. Probably right. wasn't a fire exit. Yeah, probably not. Probably some sort of other exit. Yeah. But anyway, I thought, oh, what a nuisance. So I turned around and go back up the, the what ramp. What time was this then? Oh, two o'clock-ish. Was two it? o'clock in the morning. Well, no. What time did you no, get back wasn't. to? What time did you get back to the hotel? No, we left. We left the hotel before. Well, before midnight. I mean, the, left the, for the, the hotel. The yeah, theater. right. It's about well midnight. midnight. Then. It's probably about midnight. Then. Yeah, okay. I think you might have been trapped down there for quite a long time. No, no, I wasn't. No, no. So, so then, then I thought, hang on, the the door back into the theatre yeah. had locked behind me. Yeah, because it was a push. Bar I was literally door. trapped in this vacuum. Yeah. between this the, the door out of the auditorium I've and the door tweeted, to the street. Um, I've just yeah. tweeted a picture of you, by the way. Oh yeah, uh, as you were seen in the locked. Tunnel. Oh okay. So yeah. at the two mics and at IROMG yeah. Uh, yeah. is where you find the picture. Well, I certainly was in the locked room, and I tell you what, it got quite uh, terrifying, frightening. I thought, hang on, I could be here all night. In fact, Excuse me. in fact, I could probably be here till Monday. Mm. And I thought, what am I going to do? I'm going to starve? Yeah. You know, am I going to die of thirst? Mm. Oh, my God, what's going to happen? And, um, you must be quite claustrophobic as it well. It was claustrophobic, I'm Dark. telling you. Was there any lights on? Uh, there was a light. Yeah. But, it, but it, believe me, it was, I didn't panic. Mm. I decided, do not panic, right. don't panic. And I started examining the lock on the door to uh-huh. think whether I could rip off the chain or right. something like that, get out, right. or kick the door down or something like that. <laughs> and, and, and then I started ringing people, yeah. and, of course, it was the lovely Emma, your daughter, who eventually answered. Well, you didn't uh, ring me. I did. No, you didn't. Well, I think I did, didn't no, I? No, you didn't, no. Well, maybe I rang Emma first, because I thought, you, well, she's no, you more rang, reliably you rang answer. Emma first, yeah. Yeah, that's did. right, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and, and then, but she said, well, where are you? Yeah, and, and I you s- didn't know. Well, of course I didn't, because there's more than one exit yeah. from that auditorium. I said, I don't I know. It's astonishing that you managed to find your way into the bowels of the theatre. Well, I mean, there were the bowels of the theatre. It, it literally said, fire exit, and I went down a slope mm. behind the door, but the door at the bottom wasn't, wasn't open. It was chained shut, so mm. there you go. Well, uh, we were all still mm. in the bar, so I mean, mm. you must have been mis- misinformed, or, or no. you must have been mishearing no, no. if you thought the bar was empty or no, no, shut because it wasn't. No, I didn't. And then when I was let out of the uh, the tunnel, 
uh, I went out the front door yeah. anyway because I'd opened it by well, that What time. happened from where I yeah. was standing yeah. was when Emma took the phone call and yes. started trying to explain to the executive producer, Dave, you know, that you yes. were trapped in a tunnel. Mm, mm. After we'd stopped laughing for a while, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. we decided... Oh, I see. Uh, so you were very sympathetic to my well, discomfort. Well, we yeah. worked out that the reason mm. you didn't ring me mm. was because if you'd rung me, I would have just ignored you and gone, yeah, OK, probably. yeah, we'll be down, we'll be down yeah. to get you soon. It just yeah. left you there for a yeah. few hours. Probably. But, uh, but she's mm. not like that. So eventually... Um, uh, Dave then instructed or helped, got mm. some help from the staff and said, look, we don't know where he is. Yeah. He doesn't know where he is. Yeah. But can you help find him? Yes, that's and right. so they did. And when he came across this vision of you yeah. with your uh, rather uh, ridiculous-looking face at a window, well, that's the picture that's now gone out on Twitter. Well, I put my face at the window so people recognise who it was. Yeah. Porkmeister lost in space. I know, Literally. tremendous. Yeah, it wasn't good news. But anyway, look, uh, in the end, it didn't make any difference. It was a very successful visit. We enjoyed it. And... Um, We've only got one more show now in England this year. Big one at the end of the year, which I'll tell you all about on uh, on the social... Uh, what do you call it? Social networks. Social yeah. media. Yeah, definitely. Twitter, social media. Yeah, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter. Uh, and yeah. the two, all on the two mics. Uh, all that kind of stuff. As well. All that, all that kind, kind of stuff. stuff. We've got yeah. golf to talk about. We uh, certainly I've got have. an Everton testimonial to ask you about, Everton by the way, Everton testimonial, as well, brilliant. Which is coming up. Old and, Rooney's uh, playing. And uh, we're going to talk about that uh, surfer down in Australia as well. We've got a surfer coming on to tell us yeah. about the fear of sharks. About hitting a shark, yeah. Absolutely unbelievable yeah. stuff. I've got something to say about the Open. I'm not sure whether it should have been played in those conditions. Well, we'll get to that because we've mm. got uh, Paul Gow hey. coming up in a little while. But, yeah. but look into the light for a moment. Yeah. Uh, we are the two mics. This is TalkSport. This is TalkSport. We are the two mics. There will be winners and losers coming up a little bit more. There'll be more mm. tales from Newcastle. And there wasn't anybody, unfortunately, stuck in the tunnel with you, I suppose. Otherwise, that could have been even more well, ridiculously uh, embarrassing, couldn't it? Absolutely. absolutely. Here's a couple of tweets. Megan says... Uh, uh, you two made my night. You didn't mm. know where he was or where he'd been. Typical mm. parry. Yeah, uh, well, Mark you know, says, Captain Birdseye like wrapped in bubble wrap tries mm. to storm bar, mm. Mm. which is what that picture actually looks like. You've got a chance to look at it. Yeah. And Laura, who was one of the ladies who kept us company through uh, uh, the night of the shark bar, yeah. uh, said, poor Porky. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And she knows what she's talking about because she lives in a very affluent part of Newcastle. She lives in a very affluent part of yeah. did, she, did she actually berate me for not meeting her in the bar at the hotel afterwards? Well, she was wondering where you were no. because apparently you'd said you were going to be there and then when yeah. we all got back there, you weren't there. I was. But you lot weren't. Well, we got back there and you'd gone. You told me that uh, our uh, tech op, our producer, our executive our, producer, our, our Dave, executive producer Dave, had hired a booth in the hotel. So I go back. So where's the booth? I'm sitting in the booth for 15 oh, really? minutes. No sign of you. Well, lot. Yeah. we got back there. It was pretty empty. We didn't need a booth. So we were just at the bar. Oh well. I, uh, anyway, I waited around, but nothing happened. Here's so one it didn't from, matter. Uh, here's one from yeah. Becky. It's like a scene from Psycho or The Shining. Yeah. Only worse. Stephen King yeah, couldn't exactly. write this horror. The Porking. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. Extraordinary. Uh, but anyway, look, it was it was a terrifying moment. You know, anybody else. Could have had, they could have had a heart attack, they could have had a mental breakdown, they could have panicked and got nervous and smashed their head against the wall. I didn't. I just, I just thought, right... You remained calm. Yeah, remain calm. You know, you've been in more difficult situations uh, than this. And, um, and got on with it. Got on with life. Daryl says it might be suffering uh, from tunnel vision. Uh, and Michael says Porky must have a fetish for locked rooms. And uh, Marco says it looks like the Geordie <laughs> remake of the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> it does actually a bit, yeah. Mm. But uh, that's not my fault, you know. I don't, uh, I don't put frosted windows in the doors, do I? Somebody else does. So anyway, it's quite but, a tremendous, tremendous uh, picture. Uh, it's a great picture. I think it's uh, in terms of atmosphere and an artistic presentation. It's very good. Yes. The fact that I'm the subject of it does not altogether, um, you know, thrill me. But it's amazing, but, isn't it? Uh, how, despite the yeah. fact that it's quite a sort of um, what you might call kind of vague image, yes. you can absolutely tell that it's you. That's no, the thing no that I can't. find amazing. No, you can't. Because no, it's can't. behind like this frosted no, no, glass. No, it could be anybody. No, it's definitely you. Could be anybody. It's tremendous. Absolutely mm, tremendous. Well, I'm not sure I agree with you there. Now, anyway, the, right. one of the good things, of course, about... Yes. Uh, uh, well, one of the, first of all, one of the bad things, which we may get yes. to, and I'm sure we'll figure in winners and losers, was driving back down mm. uh, through the beauty of the English countryside. Yes. Uh, uh, we came back down on the A1, which was great, except for the fact that there was some the very A1. dangerous uh, kind of slip road scenarios going on at the A1. Have they? Instead of having normal slip roads, you know, where you drive in mm. and join the traffic, yeah. what they've got is they've got this kind of little, effectively, a lay-by yeah, yeah. which you drive out of mm. and then you try and merge with the traffic after having stopped. Mm. So the traffic's going down at some 70 yeah. miles an hour, yes. lorries and all the rest of it, yes. and people are trying to join the traffic. Yes. So suddenly, you know, you'll see the guy ahead of you kind of pulling into this fast lane mm. to get around somebody who's pulling out. It's very dangerous. Is it, really? Yeah. Oh, well. And, and it wasn't mm. so bad on the way up, but on the mm. way down, definitely, uh, yeah. there could have been a few uh, you know, yeah. minor skirmishes. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you go, so we had to stop for petrol. We come out of the petrol station. Yes. 
And you just have to, to join, yeah. You just have to yeah. join from like a well, standing start. It's still a bit odd, isn't it, that the A1 is the only road in this country that I would relate to the American freeway system, yeah. where actually you can just pull off into a pub car park. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like the motorways in our country where right. you go off into service areas. Yeah. There are actually pubs and restaurants mm. littered along the A1 yeah. where you can just stop. But, and but there's no way to join the road no, again. No, that's what I mean. Actually doing it from a from a stop. That's what I mean from which a standing is, start. Which is pretty dangerous. Standing start, yeah. Pretty but anyway, dangerous. No, but one of the good things yeah. I was going to say oh, yeah. was that the golf was was carried over into the Monday, so you yes. can see a bit of it today. And then, uh, but also on Sunday, one of the bad things was, mm. uh, as we were driving down, Dave was keeping an eye on the cricket school, and literally it was just pathetic. You know, uh, yeah, it, the, the way it that just they tumbled, collapsed. didn't it? It just, it, 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 it was. And by the way, by the way, I mean, I predicted, you know, rather, I suppose, bullishly um, mm. before the series. So, oh, England can win the Test match, yeah. uh, can win the Test series, and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's not so, over yet, is it? So, for some unknown reason, I think I think Australia must have been suffering jet lag or something in that yeah. first Test, don't you? Yeah, I think Cause, so. Because you know the 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 you know Bayliss, the new um, England coach, and yeah. and shook a bit of uh, sort of um, confidence and self belief in the team, did yeah. well. But I have to say, after seeing the second Test now. You can't see England winning another game in this Test Series, can you? Well, not unless things change. And also, yeah. some people, uh, after the first Test, were, were tweeting yeah. me saying things like, oh, we haven't mm. heard much from you about Kevin Peterson. And all, right, to, yeah. all, to, all, to all of which I said, well, you know, anyone who mm. says that they wouldn't mm. be a better team with Kevin Peterson yeah. in them yeah. is talking absolute cobblers. Funnily enough, there was a, uh, a poll done. Mm. I think it was done on uh, Sky TV. I've seen it. Um, asking people who should start the... Uh, 61% you know, move up, said the bring running, back Peterson. The running order. 61% said bring back Peterson. Yeah. So yeah. the Peterson debate still rages on, I would say. Well, yeah, you say that, but... But, I mean, he's tweeting that from a beach somewhere, so even he's written off his chances of an instant recall, hasn't he? Although the next well, it's not going to happen, is it? doesn't start till next week, does it? No. It's not this week, is no, it? No, it's the 29th, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And, uh, no, it's never going to happen, but, you know, the guy won't give up, will he? But just getting back to the... Uh, now, the golf, right? Yeah. The golf, the Open. Now, you know, I know it's all very well saying it's always got to be in a Lynx course and you've got to, you know, battle the weather and the elements and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I don't think... I don't think it's acceptable to have imposed such weather conditions on the golfers to uh, find out who the best golfer in the world is. But the trouble is Uh, you don't know how bad the weather's going to be. Well, you've got a pretty good idea that it's going to be rough uh, and because it's a Lynx course and Mm. it's on the coast and it's in Scotland where the weather's never very good. But I do think... It was a lot colder in Newcastle, by the way. We got back out of the car in London, it was like 26 degrees. That was 10 degrees. You said it was 5 degrees different. It was 10 degrees different. 10 degrees difference between Newcastle and London. That's brilliant. I was able to wear a jacket in Newcastle for the first time this year. It's good. Mm. First time this summer, I should say. Uh, No, what I was going to say was... The sight on Sunday morning of the groundsman literally brushing away, you know, hundreds of gallons of water off the course yeah. was unedifying. And and I, I'm not sure the world's best golfers should be asked to play in those sort of conditions. You know, well, so- one of the things the Open uh, organisers, the RNA, yeah. came out with was that they actually yeah. they, they had probably made a mistake by sending people out on Saturday morning. That's right. And at first I thought, well, why are you saying mm. you made a mistake? Is mm. it because if you hadn't done that, yes. then it would never have been finished on time anyway? Yes. But no, it was more to do with some of the golfers saying that it was unfair because they were playing in this in ridiculous conditions. kind of uh, conditions. Yeah. And then they, 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 they stopped it, so not everybody mm. played in those conditions. That's but right. I don't know how you get yeah. around it, yeah. though. You've got to have four days of golf yeah. in, in Scotland why? at a Lynx course. You're going to have some bad weather. And why on earth did they delay some starts some days to let the weather change to the worse, including today? Because well, it was due to start raining at 2.30 today, yeah. and they actually timed the start of the, the final round at 2.30. Yeah. Um, I mean, why didn't they do it at 10.30 well, this morning? It's a good question. I imagine yeah. it must have had something to do with the TV, because the BBC came in for a bit of a shellacking this yeah, morning, because there were some uh, golfers going out, of course, right. um, to finish their rounds yeah. very, very early in the morning. Which and none, of, that was, and none of it was on TV. No, that's right, yeah. And people were watching reruns of the Doctors and all kinds of other yeah. stuff. You know, what's well, in my attic? You know, what's in a locked room? Any number of yeah. ridiculous yeah. shows yeah. when they well, could have been watching golf. I mean, well, what's the point of them paying all that money for it? Yeah. They're not going to show it. Yeah, well, you know, I can't go into that debate. What's wrong really, with your eyes? No, a bit like the same as we always come in here. You get the same problem. Yeah. You've got an eye spray now, haven't you? Yeah, I've got. Well, I had to so get some. Spray my an eye spray. Red, I'm going to yeah. get an eye spray as well. Mm. I think it's the eye uh, drops. Actually, I've got. It's, yeah, it's called middle-aged uh, hay fever. You know. Well, I think and I get hay fever every time I come in the studio. So what? I start sneezing. A bit yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, young Emma and I, by the way, we had a mm. stroll around on Saturday afternoon, visited a couple of bars in Newcastle. Very yeah, she nice told me town, about that, yeah. yeah. Really nice she town. She said you got lost then as well. Yeah, we got a bit lost, yeah. Because she's like, she uh, said, well, which way is back to the hotel? Yeah. And, you, and you started walking in the wrong direction. No, I didn't, know. No. Also, for somebody who's been to Newcastle so many times yeah. and he's worked there, yeah. the first time we walked down from the hotel down to the opera house, yes. right, we walked past this, this ancient-looking kind of... Um, 
brickwork, I suppose you might call it. Yes. And you went, oh, look, there's a castle there. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. And I said, no, no, that's a city wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To which you said, well, how do you know that's a city wall? And mm. I said, well, look, there's a big sign that says East Wall. That's right. Yeah, West not, Wall, actually. Uh, why did you not know that it was the wall? Yeah, well, you know, well, it's you a long time since I worked in Newcastle. Well, I don't go around. The wall hasn't just been put there, though. It's been no. there since, like, Roman times. Yeah, I know, but I don't go around examining Roman walls in really? towns where I work. You know what I mean? Well, I don't well, all don't the time. You don't have to. You just know it's there, though. Well, I kind of knew it was there. I just sort of forgot. Mm. I didn't realise it was in that particular part of town. Yeah. It's not a big town, Newcastle, when well, you think about really, it, really. No. You know, it's, uh, it's a very nice town, and uh, it's got lots of great suburbs and all that, but the actual city centre mm. is, uh, is not The thing that, that surprised thing. me was the yeah. way that when you go, like, you go over the bridge, and yeah. there's Gateshead, right? Yes, that's right. But people from Gateshead say, no, no, that's not part of Newcastle. Exactly. Or Newcastle people say, that's not part of Newcastle. I no. mean, it's mad, isn't it? Well, no, There was it's... a guy there called Kev from North Shields. Yes. Uh, who kept saying, I'm from North Shields. Yeah. You know, I'm not from Newcastle. North Shields. Yeah, well, it's just another town, isn't it? Along the, but the they're all kind of connected banks up, of, the, uh, of the uh, River Tyne. Right. Yeah, quite it is. Yeah, I agree. And... Uh, I mean, you've got to remember, like, um, you know, the most famous Geordie to come out of Newcastle in recent years is Paul Gascoigne. Yeah. But by the definition of the man from Gateshead, he's not Geordie because he mm. come from Gateshead. Yeah. Dunster, I think it is. Mm. Dunster? Dunster Working Men's Club. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. And what about the, mm. uh, the reporter who was there, the one who's yes. written that nice piece for oh, you that's just right, before yeah. the whole thing started? Yeah, yeah. I had a good chat with him, actually. Yeah, he's... Yeah. Yes, he's Tell d- me how you got him drunk. No, no, I didn't get him drunk. And then when he went back to the no, office, no. he got into trouble. No, no, no. That's I don't what he said. Well, that is, uh, that's, you know, I can't, I can't control his, uh, his social life, can I? Is he going to do a review of the show? I don't or just know. a review of your performance? I don't know. I, 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 I have no idea. I mean, you wouldn't... Um, well, what happened to the guy who was interviewing you? you? Well, I mean, you wouldn't dare to ask them what they're doing with it, would you? You don't go well, around who doing was, that. Who was the guy who was interviewing you in the green room afterwards, then? Um, his mate. Because he brought his mate along with him. He brought you know his mate I mean? along. Yeah, so, yeah. So, 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 so you've done two pieces so I think he was a review. Chronicle. Yes, yes. yes just I think about so. you. Well, yeah, I think so. I think they were only interested in me, you so I, I, I mean, you know, I know it's hard to bear, Mike, but, you know, you have to accept that actually you're not very interesting. So um, that's why people don't interview you a lot, well, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I certainly don't yeah. get myself into the kind of scrapes that you get into, and I'm very, very pleased that we managed to get you out of the locked room, because that would have been a great yes. story. Imagine you could have been the f- page one of the, uh, yeah, the, the paper say. instead of page 28. Yes, I could have been found there, you know, as a, as a, as a quivering wreck on Monday morning, mm. you know, after this very successful show, and then, you know, my train would have left on Sunday. I wouldn't have been on it, mass power. You know, police would have been out searching the town, find out what happened to me. Could have been a real drama. But, of course, I didn't allow it to be a drama. I uh, I just um, stood solid and got on with it. Mm. Um, now, we I... We haven't got time now. Look, look what eh? the time is. Look at the time. Well, I was going to try and talk to you a bit more about the cricket because... Um, well, we can do that in a minute, but we're going to talk about the golf first because Paul Gow... No, we talked about the golf. I've told you no, the golf should a, have been called no, we've off. We've got a guest coming on who's oh, a good. former PGA professional. Oh, that's good. So I he'll like have that. a view on that yeah. and he'll tell you what yeah. he thinks. He may yeah. agree with you, he may disagree Somebody with you. Somebody who knows what he's talking about. Yeah, but first yeah, time I'm on like, the show. Yeah. We're only mm. half an hour in already. Yeah. Uh, 08717 You can tweet us at the two mics. Uh, if you go there, you'll also see the picture of Porky uh, in the locked tunnel underneath the Tyne Opera House. Uh, it's probably the best picture of him I've ever seen. This is Talk Sport. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. The pressure's on now. Relieve the itch. Talk Sport. <laughs> Talk sport, we are the two mics. There were a few great escapes this weekend, but uh, none greater than Porky's out of the uh, Tyne Opera House, it has to be said. Uh, a couple at uh, the Open, you might say, uh, a couple of near misses. Uh, the cricket, of course, was an absolute debacle. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, but right now, we're going to talk to Paul Gow, uh, who's now with Fox Sports, former PGA professional golfer himself. Uh, we'll get his view uh, of how the organisers operated the Open and what a fantastic win it was, uh, of course, for Zach Johnson. Paul, very good morning to you and welcome. Yeah, good day, fellas. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. We've got, uh, I mean, obviously, we've got uh, a lot to talk about. We've got the playoff. We've got, uh, you know, Zach Johnson's triumph, which, which comes quite a long time after his last major back in uh, 2007. But, but the one thing that everybody's asking about now, I suppose, after the thrill has gone, if you like, is were uh, the organisers, were the RNA right uh, to do things the way they did them? You know, to, 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 to let play go off quite as late as they did uh, on Monday but also to let play go on on Saturday morning, which even they have said may have not been the best thing to do. Yeah, you know what? The RNA very rarely get it wrong, uh, especially at the at the Open. Um, I, I'm pretty sure they got it wrong. The, the players were filthy with them. Um, you know, they, just sometimes they've got to make a split decision, and, and they did, and, and, and they got it wrong. And, um, you know, the elements that, that are over there, um, maybe the, the wind just got up a little bit more when they were testing the greens, but... Um, they got it wrong this time, and uh, there was a couple of players that would have paid the price 
um, of uh, you know getting back out there and making a few bogeys early. No, exactly right. I mean, uh, and I mean, for many of us, it was quite a bonus that it carried on over into into the Monday. But if you're a, if you're a player, um, how hard is that? Because I mean, we saw that Zach Johnson wasn't even hanging around tonight after he won. He and his wife were flying straight back to the US. I mean, presumably a lot of people would have had to reschedule everything. And I know it's just one of those things. But the first time since 1988, it's happened. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about them. Uh, you know, these golf professionals, a lot of them fly around in their private jets and they can re- redirect their jets around. The, the, the toughest bit would have been the waiting. Um, the anticipation of a major is, is you just can't wait to get on the golf course. And, and when you're sitting around for 10 hours, you know, not getting out of there, all all different things come into your mind. You know, different tee shots, you know, putts, you know, the burns, the, the crowds, all that sort of stuff gets into your mind. So that that would be the only issue. Rescheduling for, for the following week, um, that, that's not a big deal But because uh, I think they've only got ca- the Canadian Open this week for the US Tour event. So um, um, just a few people wouldn't have handled that right. But they are golf professionals and you know, that, they should be able to handle that stuff. Uh, actually, Paul, I accept what you're saying. I don't want to drag this on and on, but that tournament should have finished on a Sunday evening. You know, the 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 very very iconic scene that we all love to see is six o'clock on a Sunday evening. Uh, the approach to the 18th hole. You know, the last two or three contenders uh, walking down the fairway. That's what we want to see. And th- to me, when it goes into a fifth day, it has a sense of anticlimax. It's like half the people who are watching it have gone home because they've got lives to lead. Half the golfers would rather rather be somewhere else because they're not in contention to win it and they'd rather be in their private jets off somewhere else. And I think you've got to actually, even though I say this and this is our, our home tournament and some say, you know, the best in the world, I think you've got to question where you play these things now. Why has it always got to be at a Lynx course where we know the weather is going to be incredibly challenging but can ruin the tournament? Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I think the golf course setup number one was the, the biggest issue here, you know, uh, it is a windswept golf course. We mm. know that. It's been there for hundreds of years. That's right. Um, they made the greens just too sl- uh, too, too quick. They mm. cut them down, and and the ball wouldn't stay on the greens. Um, I'm with you. How about we rotate it to a, maybe some inland golf course? Exactly. And, uh, the time, t- times have changed. Yeah. Um, yeah. The golf ball goes a lot further. No disrespect to the home of golf of St Andrews, but those boys rip that place apart mm. um, with how far. You know, when they drive the ball on ten. You know, back in Gary Player's day and Jack Nichols, they they weren't driving on on number ten. They weren't even going close. Mm. Louis mm. Oosthuizen, when it was overcast and a bit of wind, and he nearly drove it onto the 18th. Yes. Um, so the game has changed. So why not change golf courses? Um, the tradition will still be there. It'll still be called the the Open Championship, yep. and there'll be still a winner go on with some of the most prolific names in golf. Um, yeah. But sometimes the R&A are just stuck in their ways. Yeah, well, but then, I mean, you say yeah. that, uh, yeah. guys, but yeah. I mean, on the other hand, look at Chambers Bay. I mean, Chambers Bay, where the mm. US Open was held for the yes. first time, uh, is the first sort of... But Lynx, that's the first Lynx, time they played it in a Lynx, like, Lynx course Lynx in America. course in yeah. America. You know, yeah. well, I mean, not, I wouldn't say the first time, obviously, because they played sometimes at that place on Long Island. But, yeah. but, I mean, they seem to be going in the opposite direction. And I think there's something about the American golfers in particular coming over and wanting mm. to try and, you know, kind of tame... Uh, a, a, a Lynx course which mm. is legendary and you can't you can't really take it away from the Royal Ancients home can you? Well I think you can I'm not because asking I, you I'm asking uh, Paul yeah I know I know yeah. you're asking Paul but he's already <laughs> Sorry, he, he's already answered that question no, well, he hasn't. but you're too daft well, to have taken him what he said give him the opportunity to yes. answer himself Paul yes. sorry go ahead I still think these golf courses need, need to be in the rotation, but I still think there's some other golf courses that will be inland that, mm, uh, yeah. that, that, that will, will be just as good or better than, than some of these out, out, out there. St Andrews itself is outdated. The golf course um, is just outdated to the modern, um, the modern game. So um, going into probably another five years' time when they hold it there again, a lot of those bunkers that are there are not going to be in place. They're going to have to put more bunkers in. They're going to have to lengthen more tees. Um, who knows? They're 17. They could be back another 30 or 40 metres there. Um, again, they've, they've stretched that hole out. So um, I reckon share around a bit more and uh, and see how they go. Now, that golf course this week was, was very much an American golf course. So it was... It was, it was quite a change um, to, to what you normally have at St Andrews, which is hard and fast. It was soft and the balls were spinning and it was it was unusual to watch. 
um, the Open Championships with balls spinning back on the greens. Right. And would, mm-hmm. would you say, from the United States TV audience perspective, I suppose, that, that they enjoy seeing that or they, they see it as a bit of a quirky kind of place to play? Or, and what happens in the US in terms of the TV rights when, uh, uh, when it goes over to a Monday? Yeah, too. No, that's no problem. They'll, they'll switch over to Monday. Um, people will watch. Um, I, I'm with you. I think that, that it was drawn out that people did lose interest. I know here in Australia that a lot of people weren't watching it on uh, Monday morning. Uh, our time, um, that it did lose some of its Sunday afternoon hype that we normally are used to, so uh, just because it was drawn out. But um, um, it is what it is, I guess. Um, but, you know, if they prepared a lot better for it, I don't think it would have happened. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Paul, thanks very much. Paul, thank indeed. you very much indeed. Uh, Paul Gow, former player. Yes. Uh, quite quite a controversial view there. I wonder how many other what? people would share that. I mean, I know what? you share it, but yes. you're not really a golf aficionado mm. to say that, you know, move it away from the Royal well, Ancient. Well, you That's should. That's not somewhere that should you be. Sh- you should, because I. I... Well, where would you have it then? Let's well, have one of your nominations. Of Sunningdale? The Sunningdale. Yeah, what's wrong with Sunningdale? Well, Sunningdale's way too short for these guys. Well, I'm sorry. Way in that short. case, rebuild Sunningdale. They've rebuilt other golf courses yeah, over the years to, build new to, ones. To, to, to cope with uh, Tiger Woods and, and the length he was driving the ball. So mm. why can't you do that? Yeah, well, mm? uh, well, you could. What about I Walton just... Heath, which is uh, in Stockbroke well, about Walton, Surrey near Walton, where I live? No, Walton Heath's also too short. Well, you make it longer short. then. You, you make can't it longer. just make a, a classic golf you course can, longer. You can, because they've been doing it for years to accommodate Tiger Woods. No, they haven't. Yes, you can. No, no, no you're talking have, nonsense. No, you I'm don't sorry. Know what talking about. The whole point about yeah. these golf courses that have been around yeah. for hundreds of years yes. is that, you know, yes, they get changed from time to time, mm, but mm. they were built for a different time. That's true. Yeah. But, you know, the American courses are now much more modern. Mm. They've got, you know, tees much further back. You can't yeah. do that with most of these inland courses. What you'd have to do is build like a completely new... Well, why new, can you do them with links courses, you'd have, then? You'd have to build... Well, with links courses, you can mm. sometimes make them like, more mm. lengthy, depending on how much room they've yeah. got around them. But yeah, you know, look, something like Walton Heath and Sunningdale yes. in the heart of Surrey. Mm. You know, they're surrounded mm. by houses. You can't just suddenly go, right, we're going to, you know, dig out another sort of half a, half a square well, mile. You know, of, of I've, I've covered um, open golf at three or four courses. And Have I you? can tell you, for instance, all of them St. Anne's yeah. is surrounded by houses. Yeah. But it still manages to host a, a, yeah. an open about every six or seven years. But that's even shorter than St. Royal Andrews. Liverpool is surrounded yeah. by houses. That's but, right. But, yeah. they, but that's what I'm saying. They can't really keep mm. extending them. Well, they're mm. gonna, if, if, if your mm. idea was going to be taken to the, to the final sort of degree, yes. they'd have to say, right, what we're going to do is we're going to mm. build a special mm. open course and we're going to have right. the open there every single year. And I think that might get boring. Uh, well, I think I, I don't think it would because uh, it's such a complex um, organi- Sorry, it's such a complex um, combination of uh, greens and buildings and all. That. It would never get boring in my view. But you see, I think the reason, Mike, why you are literally dismissing my idea is a, it's revolutionary. No, it's not. B, B, it's very, very interesting and interesting uh, and unique. Even if you say so, you're well, it's hardly uh, unique. And C, oh, yes, it is. And C, you didn't think of it. So because you couldn't, you know, get the idea the out, way, of the brain, way you are, no. out of your adult brain, out of your adult brain, you've decided because it. it was my um, my brilliant uh, thought. You you just don't want yeah, you right. to dismiss it. You're right. You're absolutely yeah, I right. I know it's I'm a, right. I'm not right. It's a brilliant thought, despite the fact you've never played St Andrews. You've never really played golf properly at all. You've got what? a great idea of what you think Matt? should be done to change the sport. I'm an experienced golfer. My my uh, my clubs are still in uh, my locker at uh, Ivan Lendl's club in Connecticut. Are they? Yes. You sure you haven't been cleaned out by now? Well, I don't know, but. They're in a child's locker um, there. The, the, Toys R Us clubs. Don't be We've talked about that before. Why, see, see, when you get offended, you get dismissive and rude. Me. I have offended you because I've told you you weren't bright enough to think of the solution to the weather problem at St Andrews, which is to perhaps move the open golf oh, the to an inland is, course. No, the weather's part of it. That's the thing. Here's one from Bill, who clearly knows much more about golf than you do. What right. absolute poppycock that guy mm. was talking. The majors are on a different type of course, mm. and that is the point. Mm. Exactly. Uh, thank you very what much about, indeed, Bill. Um, what about the place in the Midlands? That, uh, the Belfry. The Belfry. The Belfry. Yeah. Now, that'd be all right. You see, that, well, yeah, that, that, could, Belfry, that could accommodate the Open. There's nothing like the course that uh, the, the, uh, the St Andrews or Carnoustie or Turnberry or any of those courses Well, I know that, but those, but those courses are so on the edge of Britain, like on the coast, you know, where the cliffs are crumbling and, and, uh, and being washed away, that they soon won't be fit for purpose to play golf on, yeah. What cliffs? All the cliffs around Britain are being washed away. St Andrews. There are loads of cliffs at St Andrews no, there are around no there. Chalk and no, all that kind of rubbish. stuff. rubbish. There's yeah. no chalk up well, there. Well, there are just you know what you're talking about. there. Of course, I know what I'm talking Sean about. Sean says, what is Porky talking about? Mm. The Open was brilliant. We can't control mm. the weather. The mm. Open moves every year anyway. Quite yeah. right. Well said. Yeah. Anyway, look yeah, into the Yeah, we're playing in the south then. Perhaps you should stop playing um, the Open in Scotland because the weather up there is so rough. And so unpredictable. I mean, you're much better off at Royal St George in Sandwich, uh, at Royal Liverpool, and at Royal Lytham St Anne's, in my view. 
Yeah, well, it was Liverpool last year. Is the one in uh, Wales where they've played it yet? I they, can't remember. They don't play the Open League. Can we? Can we? Can we stop, please? Now, because well, if you want, I've been yeah. told that we're running over. We're running over time. Yeah, and but I'll tell a, you. I'll tell yeah. you where the course is in Wales. We also yeah. haven't played. Yeah, it's called Celtic Manor. I know that. Do you? Yes. Right. We'll have a golf quiz maybe one of these weeks. Maybe. This is talk sport. We're the two mics. This is talk sport. We are the two mics. Winners and losers yeah. coming up. What do you yeah. mean? Uh huh. Yes. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? No, you I, mean I, I agree mm-hmm. with you. I agree. You we're agree the two that it's talk yeah, sport. Yeah, 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 you yeah, agree yeah. that we yeah. are the two mics. Yeah, yeah. Tremendous. Yeah, yeah, That's the only yeah. thing you can agree with me all night on, right? Yeah, well, probably. Yeah. Let's have a couple of uh, talk t- a lot texts of garbage, and tweets usually. here. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, text on eight ten eighty nine. Right. Here's one from David in Clarkenwell. That clown from Fox Sports wants the open move from a Lynx course. Yeah. Is he having a laugh? What next? Let's Ooh. move the Masters hang from on, Augusta. Hang on. Hang yeah, on. Yeah, great. This is the platform for open thinking, right? Open thinking. Yeah, open thinking. Muddled thinking. No, 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 no. And we like to explore the possibilities. To make things better in life, you yeah. know, not just well, sit on our better. hands and say, "Oh well, I hope the wind stops blowing, and then we could play the open golf on the four days but it's point, supposed to be the played." The wind is meant to not be part of it. Not take it to a fifth day when most people have gone home. It looks like literally like a wet Monday morning on a golf course in Scotland to finish the greatest golf competition in the world. That's I not thought, good enough I in thought, my view. I thought it was terrific that it went over on no, Monday. No, no, no. I think it's shocking. I, I think it's shocking. What, what I didn't like was the fact that yeah. it wasn't covered in the way that it should have been by the BBC. And here's one from Terry in London. Right. He says, Mike, thank God the BBC has lost the rights to the open golf, no longer having to listen to the mm. most annoying mm. commentator of all time, Andrew Cotter. Yeah. He knows the distance to every divot, every seagull. Personally, what an irritating man. I'm, over I'm, the good old days of Arlett, Carpenter, yeah. Johnners, Maskell, the days when the Beeb had some sport to commentate. On. I've never heard of that guy. Um, well, you must have been listening to him over the weekend. Well, yeah, probably. But, I mean, what I'm saying is I didn't realise it was him, so to speak. Mm. Um, but what I would say, what I would say is... What would you say? ..that I like that very old chap who uh, keeps doing it. Well, that... Peter Alice. Peter Alice, yeah. The very yeah. old chap. Yes, yes. He's well, he's a... not going to be doing it forever either, is no, he? No, he's not, but he's, he's got but a great people... sense of humour. Well, I, I mean, think he's you're... wonderful. That, that guy, um, Paul Gow, mm. said that he mm. thought that St Andrews is out of date. Yes. There are some people who think Peter Alice is out of date. Yeah. And he's often got himself into trouble by saying things which are, shall we say, inappropriate these inappropriate. days. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, never mind. He's got uh, he's got uh, strength and character. Now, listen. The other thing I want to talk Here's about. Here's one more from Bill. Okay. I might have known Paul. He would want the Open taken mm. to posh, bloody Surrey. Yeah. Give us peace, he says. YouTube. Yeah. Tube. Yeah. Yeah. No, Surrey would be great. What's the one next to Sunningdale? It's um, well, there's Walton Heath. What? Uh, no, there's, there's Sunningdale. There's Woking. There's well, Warpleston. No, no, no. There's one much Wentworth. more famous. Wentworth. Wentworth is the one. Yeah, Wentworth. Well, they, they, yeah. They, Wentworth. They played a PGA at Wentworth. Yes, right? that's right. Which is fine. Exactly. But, I mean, it's not an open venue. The open golf well, has always been played and always should be played yeah. on Lynx courses. Well, I think your thinking's got to change. If you start playing now, at Wentworth, you're in for a bad scene. Now, I got into a bit of a um, you know, uh, you know, are you mad porky type thing at the weekend Did you? by talking about John Stones yes. and his potential transfer Well, because you've said before Chelsea. on this show yes. that you think he's worth £80 million. Well, that's right. Yeah, and but Chelsea um, are making a bit of thirty million. No, right? no, made a bit of twenty million, and uh, apparently tonight they've upped it to twenty six million, but well, still woefully short of what John Stones is worth. Well, and well, obviously Jose Mourinho doesn't yeah, think so. It, well, let me tell you this: I wasn't saying that independently. Uh, John Stones is worth eighty million quid, weren't you? But what I'm saying what is, you if, saying? You, if you compare his value to the value of Raheem Ste- Sterling, Raheem Sterling, Raheem Sterling, you called him before, Raheem Sterling, he's going to play tonight, I think, that, isn't he, for uh, I think Manchester it, City? In his some, debut against Roma in, in, in some pointless, vacuous game somewhere in the world. Yeah, well, it's a pre-season yeah. friendly. Yeah, it's down in Australia, isn't yeah. it? And uh, and all I'm saying is, if you compare the relative value of uh, John Stones, who's going to be the next England captain, yeah. to Raheem what? Sterling, who will be looking. To get into the England you team. Just slip that one in there. No, I'm just telling you. Hang I'm on, just telling this you. is the same John Stones, right? Who went to yes. the Under 21 Championship? Is it not? Yes. Uh, the same John Stones who managed to concuss himself mm. while practicing. Yes, that, that's right. The same guy yeah, who then the first two came, games, came I'm back afraid. in for yeah. game three. Yes, uh, which you said would make all the difference. Yes, and then played like a complete plank. No, he didn't play a complete plank. Those around him were plankish. No, he was but responsible he, 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 for he, he all wasn't. three goals that went in. He wasn't like yeah, he, he was. was. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. You said it because he was still concussed. Well, I, I think you're I, concussed. I, I said he might have fall over in a lot of A bit of concussed. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, I was talking about his worth relative 
to the Raheem Sterling transfer. Now, yeah. at 50 million, that's a massive overvaluation. Well, well, but John we'll Stones, everybody, everybody knows anything about football. Well, we'll he's not a goal you. scorer. He's not be worth the same money anyway, is he? He's a he's a rock like defender. Well, he wasn't in the under 21 championship. Well, he is. Believe me, he was surrounded by poorer players there, mm. and and he is. And, well, maybe and, you should go to a club where he can be surrounded by better players. Um, well, you know, Everton are a great club, as you know. By the way, fantastic goal from Ross Barkley. Mm. I was watching it on Saturday afternoon when you were... Oh, that was when Everton lost it again, wasn't it? We lost, I'm afraid, what yeah. Was the score? In Singapore, 3-1. To but, Arsenal. But, but Bar- yeah, but Barkley scored a fantastic goal. I'm not sure where you were at the time. I was on my way to the, to the, uh, to the hotel. Yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't get there quick enough. And um, Well, that's because there was a lot of traffic outside Newcastle on the way in. Because well, they had roadworks. You know what? In fact, I nearly missed a turning. Because the yes. roadworks were so ridiculous. Yes. That they'd actually got a, um, a, a, one of those sort of um, maintenance trucks. Where was this? Coming up the A1. Right, OK. As you, as you came around, you right. know, past, we came past the Angel of yes, the North. that's right, uh, yeah. We came down that's and sort of around the loop. Mm. And we had to get off at uh, the A194 mm. or something like that. And yeah. instead of uh, being able to see clearly where the exit was, there was a truck, like, literally obscuring the With exit. one of the arrows? No, there was no arrows. Oh, I no, see. No, forget that. Right. Uh, it was a mm. breakdown truck mm. sitting there. Uh, and it was half covering the exit. So by the time I actually saw that's where the exit yeah. was, yeah. I had to practically come to a complete stop and make a 90-degree turn. Good God. That was unbelievable. Yeah, That's where I was. Shocking. But anyway... Um, well, I'll tell you what, if you're going to rave on about this guy, Stone, yes. right, why don't we take the view of an expert on the Stone's situation, right? Is there one? Uh, there is one. Who is the expert? His name is Andy Gray. Oh, yeah, you bet, yeah. That's up here. He's good, and he could be one of the best. Um, I think he's got every quality that you need to be a top centre-back. Uh, he seems to have a good personality. Um, he, he's good on the football, maybe just a little too elaborate at times for a young boy centre back, but it's, that's more showing his confidence than anything else. I think if you're losing John Terry in the next year to 18 months, if you're asking me, would he be a player that would fit into Chelsea? 100%. I think it makes absolute sense. Uh, he's British, which obviously helps. He costs maybe 20 to 30 million. He, he can only, in my opinion, under the right guidance, get better. So well, he, thinks, he thinks he's so all right. Andy rates him very, very high. Oh, yeah, but he says he thinks that the 26 or however mm, many million mm, uh, Chelsea mm, have offered mm. uh, makes perfect sense. So he thinks that Everton should get rid of him. No, think, no, and he no, says no, that no, he has the potential no. to be a good, uh, uh, a great centre back, but he doesn't. No. Uh, a bit too elaborate at times. He no, said. no, no, no. You've taken a bit too out, elaborate. At no, times. no. You've taken him completely out of context. What Andy said was it makes perfect sense for the boy to move on to a club that's playing in the uh, Champions League eventually. But he didn't say anything. Anything at all about the valuation? He uh, he remained neutral on that, as, as well, it's no, obvious said, to everybody no, he except it a, you. He says it's a great idea for him to go there, so he must mm. therefore think that twenty six million is about right. Mm, well, no, I don't think that's the I don't think that's the case. But anyway, look, we're not going to get into that. The point is that Everton would love to hang on to John Stones. However, however, I have to say, and this is not defeatist talk, and no way in the world um, do I want John Stones to leave the club, but. In the way the football market moves these days, the minute a club that can afford it expresses an interest in a player from a club that doesn't have the mega millions or mega billions of free money yeah. that Chelsea and Manchester City have, the minute the talk starts, the player eventually uh, leaves. Well, he's going to leave, that, isn't he? Ha- yeah, I think he is. And yeah. Everton, Everton, because of the position that they're mm, in, mm. they're going to have to uh, take the money, aren't they? Because to them, that's quite a chunk of change. You know, it's, it started with... I think um, more than they got, even more than they paid for Lukaku. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's you know, it started with Raheem Sterling. It started like that, Luis Suarez. What I mean, and John Stones hasn't said anything. We haven't had a statement from John Stones saying, "Look, you know, I love Everton. You know, they're the club who've developed me into the player I am today. I don't want to go anywhere." And and I suppose that's because if you're a young footballer in the footballing world, your ambition is to play for a club like Chelsea, mm. and that opportunity doesn't come along very often. No. So if John Stones goes, I will not blame him. Um, what I would like but it'll make, to see... But it'll do a lot of damage to Everton, though. It will, yeah, I yeah. agree. But By what the I way, like, yeah, Jennifer cool. just sent a great picture of the infamous cliffs at St Andrews. Oh, right, OK. You can see there aren't any. Well, it's a bay. <laughs> it's a bay. It's St Andrews Bay. <laughs> well, there's lots of bays that have cliffs, but St yeah. Andrews does not have cliffs. Well, yeah, yes, but that's... Sorry to disappoint you. That picture's only been taken from one angle. It's the angle that doesn't show the cliffs. Yeah, well, you're a cliff expert, aren't you? We Remember, we did a, a quiz on cliffs. You did got, we? I think you got three out of ten. No, I think... Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't got round to the old gerrymandering yet. Oh, well, I mean, we've got to call off the uh, the results of last week's quiz. Why? 
You asked me a question. You said England played Poland in the third qualifying game in the 1986 World Cup in Mexico. It wasn't a qualifying and, game. And, 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 yes, it was. No, it was the, a World Cup game. Yeah, it was the third in the group to get well, through to the knockout stages. It? That's not yes, qualifying. Yes, it is. So well, it's the third group qualified. game. The third group See, you game, you idiot. You're talking about. The third you group game. You don't even know what you're talking about. third group game, you, you idiot. Couldn't, you couldn't name four players. You couldn't name two yeah. players. And the reason England. you're getting so defensive is you know exactly what's coming next. Why? What's coming next? You said name the five Geordie players. And, of course, I... I, 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 I North East, yeah. yeah, I got Peter Beardsley and you, you I, I was, one. I was working the one on the others. Got. You didn't even get the Everton player. You named... You didn't get the Everton Trevor player. Trevor Stephen. You named one of the five as yeah. Brian Robson. That's right. In fact, Brian Robson did not play in that Are game sure because he was that? injured. I am certain. I really? checked it out when well, well, I, well, when I read on I Twitter. Well, you weren't certain. Oh, because somebody tweeted so, that he was injured, right? So, on that basis, that mm. there was an erroneous answer... Why are you still moaning about something that erroneous was ancient answer, history? I think we've got to call that off. All right, well, let's say let's say that... You, that you hadn't known that Brian Robson was injured. Let's yeah. say that you didn't even know Brian Robson was playing because mm-hmm. you didn't even suggest his name. Mm-hmm. Now, for example, if you I didn't suggest his name because he wasn't playing. No, you didn't. You think idiot. of his name. Yeah, you idiot person. You, you, you couldn't. You couldn't think of, of Waddle either, could you? Rubbish. You couldn't think of Waddle. Well, you couldn't think of Stephen. It's not the case of that at all. It's yeah, not the I mean, case of that at you all. Got, if you got say two and rather than three, mm. I would have said, okay, well, you can have the mark. Well, the problem is, I was thinking of northeast clubs when, in fact, none of them played for northeast club. They were just northeast people who played Players for other clubs from the northeast. But you didn't make that, that clear. That was the question. You didn't make that clear. That was very much. Anyway, stop moaning and groaning all the time. That's mm. all you do. Well, I told my, oh, my daughter not to bother rescuing you from that locked room. It, now, here's a question for you. Yeah. Did you know uh, that Duncan Ferguson was having a testimonial? Of course. Are you going? Uh, I don't even know when or where it is. Well, it's on August the 2nd Park. at Goodison yeah. Park. Yeah, obviously. And Isn't he a bit old for a testimonial? Play. No. Why is he having a testimonial? He already works for the club, doesn't he? Isn't that his testimonial? No. He, well, he was a long-term player for the club twice because yeah, he went to Newcastle having, and then came back. Why is he having back. a testimonial? Well, because he, uh, he, he's he been a great servant to the club and they've granted him one. And by the well, way... What's he going to do with the money? Well, I've no idea. That's up to him. But, well, I'm, why but, is I mean, he, but hang on. Tickets are now on sale for Duncan Ferguson's testimonial yes. uh, against Villarreal. Yes, that's uh, right. One of those games that you might call completely meaningless, I suppose. No, no. Villarreal, the significance of that is that uh, Duncan Ferguson scored a great goal against Villarreal over in Villarreal. Shouldn't I was they there be playing, watching. Um, shouldn't they be and, playing? If they and it was playing... disallowed by that doe bald headed uh, referee, Kalina. Mm. Yeah. Maybe they should bring well, him back to, uh, to referee the game. Yeah, they should, yeah. yeah, And then we can all punch his face in. That's um, very violent. Well, I don't I mean won't that. hear of that. I don't mean that. I mean I verbally. Hear of that. I mean verbally. 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 Well, verbally. I mean, if they're going to play a team from Spain, surely they should be playing David Moyes' team, shouldn't they? Uh, not really. Real Sociedad. Not really. Why not? Well, is he not welcome back at Goodison Park? Yes, he's welcome, but there'd be too many mixed emotions about what it was all about then. It's got to be absolutely clear it's about Duncan Ferguson. Mm. I think Wayne Rooney is playing he for is the Everton yeah. 11 that night, so it'd be great to see him in a, in a back in an Everton shirt. I mean, he will play... I after, just think the whole yeah. idea of testimonies is redundant, particularly yeah. since Duncan Ferguson is now working for the club. Yeah, I, th- well, I mean, look, I don't know what he's going to do with the money. I don't know what his circumstances well, he are. he may be giving it away. Well, I was about to say, the last, the last time I can remember a testimony, I think it was Ryan Giggs was the last testimony I remember, mm. and that was over a million quid, and he gave it away. Yeah. And, and I suppose that's what they'll do. But, but uh, no, believe me, he's very, very popular with the, uh, the fans. I'm sure he is, but very, I just, very I just popular. think... I mean, you talk about things mm. being old-fashioned yes. and past their time. Yes. And the, if the Royal and mm. Ancient and Andrews is past its time, then surely the whole idea of testimonials are mm. past their time. Yeah, I'm just reading a bit in tomorrow morning's mm, yeah. newspaper. It's on the back, and oh, I've yeah. just said to you he hasn't expressed any views one way or the other. Yeah. John Stones is definitely interested in joining Chelsea. Exclusive story here. Blues boss Jose Mourinho wants the Everton centre-back, and the champions are preparing a £25 million bid. Stones was quoted as saying he's definitely interested. Yeah, well, mm. there you go then. Just so he's going, isn't he? That's terrible. I know. Well, there you go. You, you can go and cry into your soup for five minutes because yeah. uh, it is that time of the night. Coming up, we've got winners and losers. In the next hour, also, we're going to talk to Lucy Campbell, who's Britain's women's surfing mm. champion. Uh, she's going to tell us about that terrible story down in South Africa uh, where the guy managed to escape the clutches of a shark uh, by punching mm. uh, while he was surfing in some uh, international in the face. championship. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. And, of course, there will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on this morning in about seven hours from now. One of the things I didn't mention, mm. actually, uh, which I did mention on the show up in Newcastle, yeah. was the amount, amazing amount of money I was uh, charged for a pack of cigarettes. 
Oh, when, yeah, uh, now this I is have to buy some yeah, in, no, a, in, a, in, a, in a local tobacconist stroke yeah. sort of news agent yeah. shop. Yeah. Uh, now, down here, it's not unusual for, for, um, for the most expensive shops, mm. uh, which are the ones that are open later, obviously, the yes. ones that are open through the night, to charge about £9.50. I would know. I'd have a of cigarettes, of, uh, of course. Uh, well, of course you don't. No, no, you get somebody else to buy them for you. No, 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 no. Have I you still got I'm... that packet of consulate at home? Uh, I probably last bought a packet of consulate a year ago. A year ago? Yes. Right. And I do wrap it up in cellophane. Sorry? How many did you smoke? About uh, in the past, I've smoked about two a month. Right, but it's I don't not a good anymore. Idea, is it? I don't it's anymore. Only a third of your heart works. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I don't anymore. No, no. I've given up that game. So it's you a haven't had game. So that picture I've got of you yeah. smoking outside the Hen and Chickens, mm. I think that's from last year, isn't it? It is from last year. Yeah, yeah. And and I have, that, was, no, that was just a just a, a weakness, a weak yeah. failing. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know, yeah. you were just relieved that it was all mm. over. Now, mm. um, I was uh, unable to, well, didn't think of buying enough on the way up, so I thought, well, it could be a late night, and I don't know if you can buy cigarettes mm. in hotels anymore, because mm. the cigarette machine seems to become a thing yes. of the past. You can't find those anywhere. Mm. We used to have to put in about, you know, 15 quid to get about 17 cigarettes. Which yes, was ridiculous. exactly. So, anyway, yeah. so right outside the Tyne uh, Opera House, yes. as we left after we'd gone to check it yes. out, uh, I was with old the, fashioned news agents. Uh, old fashioned news agents on the corner, run by uh, a very nice man, Mr. Patel. Uh, uh, well, it might have been. I, yeah. mis- I can't remember. I think it was Patel. I think his name was up on the door. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I was actually smoking at the time. So uh, Dave, the executive mm. producer, went in mm. uh, with my twenty pounds mm. to buy two packets for me. You sent which, somebody in to buy your cigarettes. Well, I was still smoking. You so. getting ideas above your station? No, I was literally standing by the door. Good God! I was You've standing seen, by I've the door. You, I've seen you posing next to the. Um, the audio and uh, and video uh, equipment van that came audio to audio insta- video equipment yeah, van yeah yeah to came to ins- technical came to install our sound system yeah. and our and our and our video system yeah. for the show and you're posing there like Mick Jagger standing next to the uh, you know the well, you trucks as well. that that uh, that take all the gear around America well you were as well well I was just leaning on the back of the truck that yeah. was all well that's what I was doing yeah. anyway Dave very kindly offered to go in yes. there as I was still smoking and I said well you know I can either we can either stand mm. here for a second mm. or he said no I'll just go in and get them mm. so he asked for them and he says, Oh, it's not enough money. Mm. And I always mean it's not enough money. Mm. You know, two times nine fifty yeah. uh, still should get me a pound change. Yes. This guy was charging ten pounds forty nine for a packet of cigarettes. Well, I'm glad about that. Which is an extra pound. I'm and glad I said, that might put you off. And I said to him, Are You having a laugh? Mm. And he said, No, no, I'm not having a laugh. I said, Well, why are you charging so much money? Yeah. He said, This is how much they cost in Newcastle. And I said, I can't believe that's true. Because yeah. if I'd gone well, to you a went local... in then and remonstrated with Well, the... I was standing at the door. Yes. Yes. It was only like seven yards away. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and he said, uh, Shouting well, at this poor this man. This is how much they cost in Newcastle. And I said, Well, I bet mm. if I go mm. to some, you know, yeah. uh, slightly more reputable place. Like reputable? A super, what? Like you a accused them of running a. a like well, a, it was a rip off. A knocking shop. No, it was a rip off. Just disgraceful. And if, I'd gone, if I'd gone to a, a national chain of mm. supermarkets, I'm sure they would have been the same price as they are down here. Yeah. And then I said to him, Well, even in the most expensive places, they're a pound cheaper in London yes. and he went oh well that's London for you and I yes. went no London's more expensive than Newcastle yeah, well, you don't want to tell me that your rates that you pay to the council in Newcastle well, are more expensive than well, the rates that they pay in London and, it always, and his yeah. response was well if you don't want them you don't have to have them right well let me tell you this sorry if you have, if I've, I've passed your point no, of interest now no no you haven't no not at all You've that's just very interesting right. because, because funny enough I was going to tell you something about uh, all cigarettes all I'm, tonight, asking, okay? right? all I'm asking yeah. is, for, is for a reasonably uh, universal price right well let me tell you this I think there should be another five pounds tax put on every packet of cigarettes right and that's do you to, know how much tax is on them already uh, probably about seven pounds is it uh, I would say at the minimum it's seven pound fifty out of nine pound fifty. Yeah, I would say that's right. Well, it should be another five pounds because do you know the real cost of um, treating people with lung cancer to the NHS? Yeah, it's and less pi- than and, the and, amount of tax that yeah. they get back already. Well, I'm t- I'm I'm telling you, we've you've got to make it more punitive. Because, no, you haven't. Yes, you have. And the other thing then is that's why they won't ban cigarettes because they collect more yeah, money in yeah, tax than, yeah. it, than it costs to treat people and, who are victims of lung cancer. And also, I think we should put another two pounds on every tin of fizzy pop bought for children because well, that's a different again, argument. they are being given all sorts of terrible diseases like um, what's that one? Well because their parents are letting them drink too much Yeah that's it. what I mean, that's what I mean and that's because it's so cheap, you know 49p for a can of coke, mm. you should make it £2.49p and they'd soon stop uh, drinking it because although I'm not into punitive taxation and in fact I hate taxation because it, 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 it wrecks economic growth and, and uh, all our abilities to be entrepreneurial there are certain areas where it should uh, be punitive and one of them is a cigarette mm. I think cigarettes should cost at least £15 a packet. And in fact, really... Well, you know, what, what, I would, if, if they were £15 a packet yeah. in London, Newcastle, yes. Cardiff, yeah. Manchester, yeah. Birmingham, you know, and all points east, mm. north, mm. west and south, that'd mm. be fine. In but fact, to allow people to just willy-nilly yes. chuck another quid on yes. because they feel like they can, 
I think that's outrageous. Well, I think the best way to do it is a packet of 20 cigarettes should cost £20. Then if everybody knew that every time they put a cigarette in their mouth it was a pound, yeah. they'd soon stop smoking. If well, they, they stopped wouldn't. smoking, there wouldn't be so much lung cancer. No, they wouldn't. And if there wasn't so much lung cancer, there wouldn't be so much pressure there's on no, the NHS. There's no evidence, it's by simple the way. As that. There's no evidence that the cost of cigarettes going yes. up has yes. actually made anybody stop. None at all. Um, there isn't. Uh, Sales not... are just as much as they were. Well, in that case, at least we raise more money to run the NHS yeah. because it's so much why. is, is that's, burdened that's by why. people with uh, yeah. ca- but, uh, but, diseases but no, brought not. from cigarettes. The NHS is burdened by people with all kinds of diseases. Yeah. That's the whole point of it. It's called the National Health Service yeah. for people with diseases. That's what it's supposed right. to do. What would you like it to be burdened with? Uh, um, people I, who are completely fit and well and therefore don't cost any money. No, I'd like it, you've, I'd you've like it to be me, unburdened. You've cost me I'd as like, a taxpayer more yeah. money than I could ever earn probably in a million years. Why? Because of all the treatment you've had. Yes, I know, but you see, I didn't deliberately go and wreck my body in order to give myself acute heart failure. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, it wasn't. You it was completely genetic. abused your body no, my dad for died your from entire it. life. No, no, my dad died from it, seriously, well, when that he was might 58 be, years that of might, age. That might be a, a, and, a, and, a happenstance. Uh, no, it is. It is. That's, that's, I, 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 the doctors well, have found out they got my dad's medical files. didn't help that you drank as much as you drank and you smoked as much as you smoked. You smoked for years. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. When I met you, you smoked. No, I didn't. You, well, you're telling me you didn't smoke in New York. I don't remember. You don't. Of course, you don't remember. I don't remember. I don't well, remember. you did. You smoked for, for the first anyway, twenty years I knew you. Anyway, the reason I'm talking to you about this is because I've come upon some information, which Have of you? course you wouldn't know about, but I do. Well, I'm, lo- I'm uh, looking forward to being told about. Tomorrow, it. a blueprint's going to be published called the Independent Cancer Task Force. Okay, oh, yeah. right. it recommends a national five-year action plan of prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. It's going to cost the NHS another two billion pounds, uh-huh. but it will save thirty. 30,000 lives, really? okay? Team so, of they're experts. Going to spend, so they're going to spend two billion yeah. on an information campaign. Yes, that's right. That it's, is nonsense. No, no, it's. Uh, Why it, don't they it, use the two no, billion to no. help people who have got all sorts of cancer it's a five, it's and a f- give them the actual medication no, that they want? No, that's no. what they should be doing. It's a five year plan. Now, team of experts led by Cancer Research UK boss Harpal Kumar. How much will does he co- make? Uh, I don't know, quite a lot, I hope, because yeah, he's an expert. We'll call for cigarettes to be taxed more heavily. Uh, what he said was, our expectation is that the government and NHS will now make the investments required and implement this strategy with commitment and speed, OK? I mean, what a load of cobblers. No, 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 it's when not. have you heard that before? Well, I'm, t- I'm telling you, yeah. I, I, yes, exactly. Uh, right, this is um, the kind of nonsense that the NHS does, which is what annoys people so much, right? What the NHS yeah. should be doing yeah. is not spending money on quangos, mm. not spending money on mm. studies yeah. that uh, end up actually doing nothing apart yes. from bleeding obvious, yes. and not paying all of these so-called well, experts to run campaigns which are completely worthless. Yeah, here, I'll listen to this. Why don't they just ban cigarettes and be done with it? A plan of action is needed urgently because cancer rates are on the increase. Last year, 280,000 people were diagnosed with the disease, that's expected to reach 300,000 by 2020 and 360,000 by 2030. So, obviously, something's got to be done. Well, yeah, but they won't do anything. We need action this day. No, they won't do anything because they need the money. Yeah. What they should do, if they really Mm. believe that cancer Mm. is caused by smoking, which they don't believe, actually, right? They say that it heightens your chances of getting lung cancer, Mm. but not everybody Mm. who smokes gets lung cancer. Yeah. What they are doing instead is to say... You know, on a cost-benefit analysis, mm. we would rather have the tax money because that actually pays for all the treatment that we have to give people. Yeah. Well, if they, if they cut that out, ten billion quid is what they collect in tax. Yeah. From cigarettes, right? Yeah. They can't do without it. Well, I'm. You know, the you've got to square the circle here because one is a direct result of the other. Because so many people are, um, you know, are, are, are doing themselves in with, you know, stupidly yeah, sticking the other things reason, in their mouth, no, which but, they then set fire no, to... but there are many more then, expensive... Then you need the £10 billion quid to treat no, them. No, you don't, because there are many, many of them die before mm. the treatment can even be administered, Yeah, right? well, that's true. So that actually saves the NHS money. Well, I mean, look, if we could guarantee they'd all die without needing years and years of treatment, that would be good. Mm. That, I mean, in that yes, case, like why, that. Don't we, why don't we make cigarettes more carcinogenic so that when people do smoke them, they know that they've only got a very limited uh, lifespan? No, well, that's the most ridiculous thing no, you've said not. all night. No, it's not, because the real cost... Is is not the you know the treatment like oh you know lung transplant or something like that because mm. you can only give you a few people lung don't transplant. Get, people don't get lung the transplant. real cost is the years and years of treatment you've got to give to somebody who's mm. slowly destroying their own lungs by sticking things in their mouth which they set fire yeah. to. Well, I mean you well, know it's an you, outrage as, as you used to do. It's an and, outrage uh, as many people have done in the past and who have given up. You know for a man who's but cost, I saw the light. For a man I who, saw the light. Yeah, well you look into it again because it's no that no, time. no 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 you look don't need to. I saw the light when the light was you know flashing in front of my face. You saw the light at the end of the locked tunnel. No, 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 no. I'm good at spotting lights that are flashing, believe me. Yeah, I bet you are. There's flashing lights going off inside your head all the time. This is Talk Sport with the two mics. 
Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out later yep. on this morning, about seven hours from now. And of course, uh, it's uh, wins and losers coming up a little bit later on. So mm. uh, I dare say, um, I can't remember what we. I think this week I'm going to be favouriting, and you're going to no, be no, retweeting. No, no, I'm favouriting. I'm favouriting. Well, no, you can't do it every yes, single you can. week. Like Why that. not? Why not? No, you can't because because we're going to now alternate because after okay. the last two weeks, uh, uh, three weeks, I think you've had a go at favouriting. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's now my turn. Okay, fine. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't bother me. Really. Doesn't bother me at all. Mm. Uh, now then, uh, what was I going to tell you? Oh yeah, I was going to tell you. Well, you know. We were talking about uh, we were talking there about uh, cancer and all that. Yeah. But I've uh, I've done some other medical research over the weekend since yeah. we got back from Newcastle. The gene that could help explain why some people become alcoholics has been found in the brain's reward system. Reward system. The reward yeah. system. Right. Okay. Every brain has a reward system, yeah. right? right? Human brain. Yeah. And that is that. Oh, I've done this, therefore I can indulge in this. You yeah. see what I mean? Right. And that's the category that um, that uh, alcohol falls into. Okay. Listen, mutations in a few strings of DNA that make teenagers significantly more eager when they expect chocolates or other prizes could also influence whether uh, they will turn into binge drinkers. Oh, yeah. How about that? Mm. So, but a binge drinker is not the same as an alcoholic, though, is it? Scientists have known for almost... Sorry? I'm answering it by telling well, you more no, you information. Well, well, you didn't say here yes are, or here no. Here are. Scientists have been known for almost a decade that about half of alcoholism can be explained by people's genetic inheritance, yeah. but the details of how this works are little understood. Mm. So that's what I'm telling well, you. Well, maybe they should spend a bit more money trying to understand that instead yeah. of launching yeah. yet another failed campaign that's going to cost two billion quid yes. to try and do something which is never going to happen. Guess what? The fruit fly is involved in this. The fruit the fly. The fruit fly. It says researchers have now identified the human equivalent of a gene that shapes fruit flies' taste for alcohol mm. and discovered a similar role in people. Yeah. It's known as the RSUI. The gene seems uh, to regulate how much people's brains light up at the prospect of a reward, as well as being strongly associated with alcohol abuse. How about that? Yeah. Well, so, so what does that so mean, though? Effort and to reward, the layman. You Does that mean that you drink because you want a reward? Do uh, I drink because I want a reward? Well, you don't know until you get your genetic pattern in your brain examined. No, and right. if that comes well, out... how can I get that done? Um, well, does not, it say... not easy. Not easy. You'd have to have a brain scan, probably. Yeah. And then they'd have a look at your, uh, your novel. Yeah, I've had a brain what... scan. Uh, have I had a brain scan? Yeah, I've had brain have scans, you? yeah. yeah. What did well, they find? Uh... I'm not going to answer that question because you're trying to make out I, I've got an inefficient brain. No, I'm not. I'm just asking you what they found. They found it to be working perfectly well. Well, yeah, but why did they give yeah. you a brain scan? Though? Because I had a whole body scan. Right. Because that's easier than having a scan on your heart and lungs. Uh-huh. So they put you into a tube. Actually, right. it's very, um, what's the word? Uh, claustrophobic. Claustrophobic, yeah. yeah. And you go in this like tube. A, like to, a tunnel. Yeah, that's right, through this machine. Right. And uh, it's a bit worrying, I have to say. <laughs> you but have it, to lie completely still, don't you? You do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and can't believe you can do that. Yeah, well, Because you're the most active yeah. person I've ever known. No, no. Not at you all. can't like it completely not still. Not at all. Um, no, I didn't mean what did they find, as in they didn't find anything because you haven't got a brain. Yeah, I just wondered if they yes. might have found that you had particular, no. you know, larger, you I, know, I know, frontal lobes or you I know, know something uh, else. I know what you're trying to say. Don't worry about that. I mean, I'm very, um, I'm very keen on. Um, on, uh, you know, the physical attributes of your body, because, of course, I, you know, mine is so delicately posed. You Apparently know, posed, so, yeah. yeah. And so I have to wait. Oh, I see you've got your, uh, your armband on that your, uh, your well, son I'm gave st- you. Yeah, I'm still wearing it, because I'm going to see him in the Black morning. Black and white. So I yeah, that's sure good I'm idea. still wearing it. Good idea. And, of course, I wore a black and white shirt in Newcastle, which you well, didn't. Well, you said yeah. it was black and white, yeah, yeah. but it didn't look anything like a Newcastle yeah, shirt. It was black and white. Anyway. It was like a black shirt with a very thin white stripe. All right. Now, don't be um, shocked at what I'm going to do next, OK? Well, I'll try not to be. What are you going to ah! do? <laughs> right? No, you're not shocked, are you? No. Now, do you know I did Frightened. that? Do you know I did that? I'm scared. Do you know I did Is that? What? I don't know, you're reenacting what? the tunnel. No, no, moment. no. We were talking about medical things, right? We were talking about uh, health and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Now, I found in my research over the weekend yeah. the one area. What research over the weekend? You were in Newcastle. Uh, no, no. You bladded with everybody else. No, I was back on Sunday evening and I got straight down yeah, to it. Yeah, but you'd been on the train getting bladded. You no, just no, said. no, no. I was, a couple no, of bowls. Uh, there was an awful lot of people on that train. Those was trains it? get absolutely packed on a Sunday, really. Yeah. I mean, although I had a first-class well, seat... Well, it's cheaper to go first-class at the weekend, isn't it? No, not really. Of course it is. Not really. It I... is if you buy your ticket and well, get yourself upgraded. I'm not sure. Yeah, you can't get upgraded these days if there's no room in the first-class compartment well, for no, you. But there's no room because no. everybody's got upgraded. No, no, honestly. Honestly, they, they, they weren't accepting upgrades because the train was so full. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. the reason it's full yeah. is because they've already upgraded. No, no, these were people with pre-bought tickets. Really? They weren't people who had second-class tickets who were trying to upgrade. 
awful for they you. couldn't get them in. Well, so, I was in already. I had a ticket. You might yeah. as well have. So did yeah. you ever, did you have yeah. to share your table then? No, I didn't, because I got myself a little table of my own. Oh. Smart than the average bear, mate. Really? I got the, so you sat in a little see, solitary seat I, at the end of the carriage? Sort of. I've got, you see, I've got great psychology. I saw all these people take these four-person tables yeah. and they spread all their papers out and mm. they've got their own food they've brought on. You and must I think, hate that, though, if you're in first class. Uh, no, no. And I think you're going to be sharing that uh, table with a stranger within about ten minutes, mm. you know, who's going to get on this train. Yeah. And sure enough, they are. I always get my own individual table, just with a seat the other side, which put my bag on, because right. nobody's going to be bullshit enough to So you put your bag on a seat? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I hate people to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's so yeah. selfish. Yeah, well, that's because I want to reserve that area for myself and, as well. And didn't anybody come along? Because if I, if I see yeah. that, I yeah. would immediately just go for that seat. No, no. Just to annoy you. I'd no. go, excuse me, do you mind moving that bag? No, I'd give people the steely look. and well, uh, I wouldn't care, and, I wouldn't and, care and, if and they ba- steely look. And they back off. You wouldn't know. worry me. But anyway, look, the reason I scream was, screaming is one area of human behaviour which has never been properly researched to find out what... Um, role it's had in the development of the human being well, since they, we moved well, from being apes. Primal screen ther- therapy and all well, that. Well, this is it. I mean, John Lennon went into primal screen the therapy. The man who must not be named. Yeah, that's right. When he met uh, Yoko Ono, yeah. and he literally rolled around on the floor in this in this cl- closed in room, fetal position, a locked room, a locked room, a literally, locked room. and went ah ah ooh, ah, and he and he wrote a song about it on his uh, on his first LP after which is called the Yoko Ono Band. Oh, yeah. After he left the Beatles, and it was well, 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 and then started screaming and all that kind of stuff. You know, that was his uh, his primal scream record. But it says. Um, researchers are now examining recordings of screams from films such as Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho Blimey. to find out what uh, what part they form in human behaviour. They realised the sound quality was too poor on film, so then they had to go and find people to sit in rooms and scream yeah. to get the original sound. It involved recruiting 20 men and women to scream warning phrases such as, ''Holy hell!'' And things like this, which holy Batman, hell. which Batman used to sort of scream out. I don't think yeah? he ever said "holy hell." Well, you know, um, and and also things like you know they'd shout at somebody else, "It's right behind you," and then look at the fear factor in the person's face yeah. when the person t- turned round. Sounds more like a pantomime than a medical. When experience. When the scientists measured how dramatically the frequency of the screams modulated, or in auditory jargon, the roughness, right? Yeah. They found that the range of the scream from 30 to 150 hertz, that's H said, right, was yeah. very different to those of ordinary human voices and musical instruments. Therefore, the scream has a completely different effect responsively to other human beings. Really? The only other sound that had a similar roughness, that's the official um, description, was the noise of an alarm clock. How about that? Well, I don't know what you're talking about here because it Why? doesn't appear to have any conclusion, this thing, apart from the fact that screaming yeah. clearly is something which uh, well, uh, can only be done in a controlled environment no. if you want to make it sound right. No, no. It, 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 listen, I'm telling you why this is such an important piece of research. Why? Who's Brain... it been done by, by the way? Uh, who's it been done by? Yeah. Ooh, let me see. I mean, you got it at the top of the research paper. Um, eh? Hang on, I'll find that why in a minute. Why have you got it at the top of the I'll research paper? I'll find that in a minute. I'll find it. Look, this is the key factor that you're looking right. for. Brain scans of volunteers listening to the screams showed that they lit up a primitive region in the brain called the amygdala, right? <laughs> what do you, what do you think? The amygdala. The amygdala, which plays an important role. How do you spell it? Uh, A M Y G D A L A. The amygdala, which plays an important role in assessing threats. People also responded much more swiftly to screams than to normal speech and were much better at working out where the scream came from, Okay. Yeah, but what is, I don't see what the conclusion yes. of it is. Well, the conclusion is... Oh, it's, sorry, it's in a journal called Current Biology. Current Biology? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know you got that one. Yeah, I get that one, yeah. Blimey. Rapid accurate evaluation of danger... Here, here, is that this, quarterly, that? It's quarterly. Mm. Uh, rapid accurate evaluation of danger is crucial for adaptive behaviour. It says in the, uh, in the Current Biology um, research paper, uh, a guy called Dr Arnold, um, said he'd been astonished to find how little scientific research had been carried out on the subject of screaming. He also thought screaming could yield some hints about the origins of language, OK? Yeah. 
and one reason why screaming is so little studied may be the harrowing nature of the work. You know, it's horrible to Listening examine to screams. Screaming. Well, it yeah. probably is. Yeah. I mean, the place where you really find people screaming the most, I would say, mm. is in the theatre or the cinema. Yeah. You know, where they go and see a horror film. That's right. And then the horror film like comes Michael on. Michael Jackson's thriller video. Uh, yeah. Well, no, a bit more mm. horrific than that, yeah. actually, mm. where mm. people genuinely scream. Yes. Because they're frightened by something, mm. you know? It says, all day long, this is Dr Arnold, he says, it's a very harrowing nature of work to study screaming. It's a terrible area to study. All day long, you're just editing the sounds of people and babies screaming, and that can get very depressing. Mm. Baby screams are, in fact, the worst. I don't find that. Mm, Babies well, crying yeah. is, is something you do get used to. Yeah, yeah. And when you forget about it again and you hear it again, you've yeah. forgotten how you got used to it in the past. Yeah, right. Now, a couple of quick texts for you. Okay. One from someone who doesn't give a name. Uh, it's 85p to every pound, which is the tax on cigarettes. Yes. And according to Ian in Rossendale, mm. have a word with Porky, will you, mm. Mike? He says, I can't believe he thinks that people will stop smoking mm. if cigarettes cost £15. Yeah, they will. I can remember people saying, if the government of the day puts cigarettes up to a pound, yeah. uh, I will stop smoking. Yeah, and, that, of course, they didn't. That because was a, you that, don't. That was a long, long time yeah. ago. Long, now, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk about screaming coming up in a moment right. because we're going to talk to Lucy Campbell. Do you know mm-hmm. who Lucy Campbell is? Lucy Campbell? Yeah. Hmm, Lucy Campbell, what should she be screaming about? I don't know, you have to tell me. You don't know, do you? She's the Britain's work, women's surfing champion. Oh, from excellent. 2014. Right. And we're going to be asking her about uh, that situation down in uh, um, uh, South Africa. Okay. When that guy was attacked yeah, by sharks. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. Some extraordinary stuff. A lot of screaming going on there. This Definitely. is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053am and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker! Show this morning. We've already talked about uh, the benefits of screaming, uh, the dangers of smoking, mm. uh, the yep. troubles with getting uh, stuck in a locked uh, tunnel uh, underneath the theatre in Newcastle. Now mm-hmm. we're going to talk about surfing. Excellent. That's how uh, sort of you know varied and uh, interesting yep. this show can be. We're going to talk to Lucy Campbell, uh, who's Britain's women's surfing champion from 2014. She's over in Spain uh, to take part in uh, a mm-hmm. surfing competition there. Lucy, a very good morning to you, and thanks for staying up for us. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Hi, Lucy. Now, I mean, obviously, Hello. surfing is not something that, that many of us have done, mm. not something that many of us know that much about. But, I mean, when you see that footage, like we all saw at the weekend, uh, of that Australian guy down in South Africa... Frightening. You suddenly go, that's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. It's shocking. Yeah, I mean, have you ever been in a place... I don't know if you've surfed in that particular bay, but, I mean, apparently there's sharks in it all the time, and it must be... Is it ever something that's on your mind? Well, yeah, and I've had it, I've had, like, well, not, nothing compared to that, but, like, little sharks pop up and you sort of think, like, oh, should I, should I be in the water? Should yeah. I get out now? Or? Right. Because yeah. we keep hearing reports yeah. of sharks being spotted more and more off the coast of, of England, the southern coast of England, but they're not, like, yeah. dangerous sharks, are they? No. No, I mean, like, we get lots of basking sharks and things, which are all right, they don't have any teeth, but... Right. Um, it's a bit yeah. like Porky. Is it like Porky who sits here? I mean, well, you know, kind of more of a no. I mean, more I mean, of a basking <laughs> shark with no teeth than a killer shark. You know what I mean? Well, it's all very well him making a joke about it, Lucy. But if you had to make an instant decision about whether you were facing a great white or a basking shark, it yeah. would still put you in a pretty um, perilous position. Do you think? Now, now, what I was yeah. going to say, is, Lucy, two things here. Firstly, as you're a championship surfer, do you now? have the underside of your surfboard painted in all sorts of uh, kaleidoscope-type colours because a lot of sharks think a surfboard is a seal, don't they? And that's why they go and eat it. They do, yeah. I'm afraid I don't. Well, do you but think... If I started surfing in places like South Africa, I would definitely consider it. Oh, you'd have to, indeed, or Australia yeah, or something like that. And the sure. second thing is that uh, I know for sure, because I research these things, and you have You've to... You've never actually been on a surfboard, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have. You've been on a surfboard. I have. Yeah, yeah. That is not a uh, that is not a true statement. I, I have been on a surfboard in Cornwall. In the sea, or just on the beach? In the sea. In the sea. <laughs> I, I, How long did you stay on it? Uh, not long, but I've been on one, and it was. I tell you exactly the name of the bay it was in. In fact, I've forgotten the name of the bay, yeah, of but, you it's, have, yeah. but it's around there somewhere. What, somewhere it's in near New St. Ives. No, no, it's near, near Lands End, between Lands End and St. Ives. But anyway, listen. What I was going to say, Lucy, I learned years ago, just in case I did become a, a, a surfer, that when you were faced with a shark. You in fact don't give way. You have to. You have to make that shark think you are stronger willed than than the shark itself. And then, if the shark if the shark didn't get the message, I would take 
my, the two fingers of both hands and start poking the shark in its eyes. You okay? said you, last week you yeah. said yeah. You, last week you said yeah. sharks didn't have eyes. Uh, well, whatever they have instead of eyes, I would start poking it in those. Okay. <laughs> Well, and, instead uh, of eyes, what do you think I, they have instead of eyes? Uh, uh, well, you know, like guidance things, like uh, radar type uh, holes and radar uh, holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and the <laughs> other, the other, the other thing is, Lucy, I'm that, sorry about this. We did actually get you on to ask you some questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I'm, Corky, I'm, I'm afraid, no, is incapable of no, shutting up. And, and Lucy, at the end of the day, what this chap appears to have done is actually smashed the shark on the nose with a no, with, it, with his fist. No, he, he punched, punched it. it. The, no, he punched it the back. Punched it. Yeah. So I mean, are all those things? You know, would you recommend? all those uh, sort of points of behaviour to try and uh, sort a shark out? Yes, to be honest, I'd probably just be paddling as fast as I could at the beach, but yes. he did pretty well to get a punch in at a shark. Yeah, he really did. He, he certainly That's did. I mean, what, what, I mean, what, <laughs> was the, what was the reaction of the of the surfing community to that? Was it the same mm. as everybody else's? Or, or is it, I mean, because, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of things that bad things can happen to you when you're surfing, aren't there? Um, yeah, you get pretty wet. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess you get wet, and I'm, I mean, I've seen uh, I've seen uh, some some footage of you surfing, and I don't know where you were surfing in the video, but it, you were just surfing in a bikini rather than like a wetsuit. So I presume that wasn't in Cornwall. No, yeah, that wasn't Cornwall. Ah, okay, so where's your where's your favourite place to surf? Um, I was in Indonesia earlier this year. Okay, and Indonesia, I think, I think pretty perfect there. It's really yeah. good. I mean, yeah. Lucy, can you understand the mentality of people, for instance, in Australia, who are still surfing in seas where there are now regular shark attacks? And, and you know, for some unknown reason, they, their attitude is, well, if you want to surf, you've got to be aware of the fact that you might get bitten by a shark. Yes, I kind of would that. Well, well, you, well, you don't really get bitten <laughs> by a shark. You get eaten by a shark. Yeah, exactly. It takes your leg off or something. You don't yeah. get your leg back. Yeah, that's true. Do you need do you need like shark insurance, Lucy, when you surf? <laughs> hey? Yeah, you should probably invent that. That's a good idea. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. But I mean seriously, do no. you have do you have to have special insurance for surfing? No. No. No, really. <laughs> and Lucy also sharks seem to her answer the question. Well she had answered it. She had I don't answered think it. So. No, Lucy I was gonna say is um also sharks seem to eat more men than women. Does that mean <laughs> that, that men are tastier than uh, as far as you know? Huh? I've never thought of that. No, ex- ex- exactly. You know, you might be safer because perhaps the shark doesn't like the delicacy of the female Where form. are you getting these figures from? Yeah. Well, no, I'm, 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 many more. Uh, because there was a couple, there was a Russian couple off mm. the coast of South, uh, South North Carolina a, a few weeks ago. Right. And he ate both of them. Really? Yeah. It's bad news, isn't it? Um, I mean, <laughs> Lucy, is the film Jaws, where we keep playing a bit of the theme music here, is that a particular favourite of yours? Um, no. No, I can't say it is. Really? I thought it, I thought it would be. I thought, you know... You'd, you'd... Stupid question. Well, no, it's not a stupid question. It's very relevant. Lucy uh, uh, works in an environment in which sharks are predators, so she's going to be very aware of them, isn't she? Mm. Uh, what about yeah. what about this uh, championship you're in at the moment over in Spain? What's uh, where, Whereabouts in Spain is that? So I'm up near Bilbao. Oh, OK. Mm. Right. Um, up in the north of Spain. Very nice. Great seafood uh, there. Ooh, mm. yeah. Yeah, mm. tremendous. Um, and so, um, how, how many people are you competing against? Um, so there's about forty girls. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. And how yeah. big are the waves? Uh, really small at the moment. Are which they? Isn't too good. That's not good, is it? Okay. How high do they have no. to be to kind of? Do they have to be like tournament standard or something? How high do they have to be in order for it to be a proper um, competition? Well, they hold it if it's like above knee high. Really. Okay. All right. Yeah. Which yeah, right. I hope it is a bit bigger than that. But... My uh, my family, Lucy, comes from Bournemouth on the south coast of England, no, they right? Oh, yeah. Come from Birkenhead. No, well, that's where they live now. And what they did there is, what the uh, the council did at a place called Boscombe was put all these sandbags, huge sandbags, <laughs> in, the, in yeah. the water about 300 yards off the shore to try and create yeah. false waves. It didn't work. It's still a disaster. No, it didn't. No, it didn't work. So, uh, you know, we are struggling to get good serving conditions in this country still, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I knew it would be the case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Lucy, one one last uh, one last piece of advice for you. If you invented okay. a surfer's suit of armour, right? 
then, then, yeah. no, no, no. Then, then, for the no, safety I'm, I'm of listening. for the safety of surfers in shark infested waters, well, like, sort of like you know, the knights yeah, of the yeah. round table. Well, the shark wouldn't be able to eat somebody had a suit of armour on, would well, they? Well, when it start rusting, eh? When it start rusting? No, of course it wouldn't. You'd be made of special aluminium that doesn't rust, wouldn't it? And it's lighter. That's light. An yeah. aluminium surfing suit. What do you yeah. reckon, Lucy? Yeah, yeah sounds. Maybe Kevlar might be better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kevlar. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> no, that's absolutely right. Something like that. Well, yeah. listen, listen. The best of uh, luck mm. with the uh, with the competition. Mm. Hope the waves get a bit thank bigger. Thank you very mm. much. And thank yeah. you so much for uh, for for uh, for talking to us. Yes, absolutely. Oh, thank no you. worries. And, and best of luck with the competition, yeah, I just Lucy. Said that. You sound I like mean... a winner. You sound like a winner to me. I already said that, <laughs> yeah. Lucy. Thank you very well much done. indeed. That's yeah. Lucy Campbell. Yeah. Uh, Britain's women's surfing champion. Yeah. Do you not see what I mean about a suit of armour? I mean, in, I don't, in theory, I, it's a great idea. That's what I mean. I but all I can see now yeah, is yeah. a guy uh, as if he was riding a horse mm. with one of those pointy visors no, 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 no. and a load of really heavy no, chain no. mail no, no. and a load of, like, breastplates and, you know, all that kind of thing. I mean, what I don't understand is surfers, just to sort of protect themselves, could wear... You know, you know how you see rugby players with those bandages wrapped yeah, around yeah. their thighs, so that when they're lifted up in the mm. in the line out, yeah. they, they they get elevation. Yeah. If you had two of those wrapped around your thigh and and your calf, yeah. made basically of metal, yeah. with little studs on, you know, yeah. the, the shark would grate its teeth on. Surely, <laughs> uh, no, no, surely that's um, yeah, that's a deterrent. It'd be heavy though, wouldn't it? Well, no, I don't think it would be that heavy. I think you can make lightweight materials Light these days. Metals. Yeah. Well, she said yeah. Kevlar, which Kevlar, might be better. I don't know. It's a very good idea. Stab proof. Very I don't know if it's shark proof though. Very, very good. I think it would be shark proof. You've got to remember, sharks don't actually like humans. They only attack them if they think there are other things. Like, yeah, uh, I know, but, like but once they've they bit, that sort once of they've stuff. bitten into you, then they yeah. quite like it because they like eating anything. I mean, they're, well, they're like omnivores, blood. aren't they? Like, I mean, that's where that's where the Shakespearean word for the smell of blood comes from. The sharks, eh? They sharks. Shakespeare's uh, found all that out. What word does he use then? You know, smell of blood or something in the Merchant of Venice. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah. You know, know what I'm talking about. about. No, I've no idea. What oh well, about. you know, you're not well read and in, educated in, in the ways. I didn't know of Shakespeare. there were sharks in the Merchant of Venice. Yeah, they were, well, they're not. But I mean, he talks about the. Uh, the uh, sharks and the smell of blood. Does he? Yes. Oh, yes. We'll see if I can find a reference to that. Okay. Coming up. Good. Uh, we are the two mics. Uh, that was surfing. Uh, this is t- This is Talk Sport. We are of the two mics. Uh, got lots and lots of tweets and texts coming in. Uh, and here's one from Tony in Birmingham, mm-hmm. apropos of nothing at all. He says, I've got a complaint, dear MG. Mr. Yeah. Parry has not said Louis van Gaal for weeks. Yes, Can he true. please do it again? Have we got a story about Van Hal to talk about? Um, I see Wayne Rooney's been uh, come uh, out, uh, uh, coming out and, and has been has been saying that he's now, or it looks like he's now going to be the sort of the, uh, the, the number striker. one striker. Uh, and some people would say, well, why not? That's precisely what he should be. He get it? twenty or thirty goals a season, mm. but also Rooney has obtained permission from Louis Van Hal. <laughs> Thank you. To play in a testimonial for Everton in honour of uh, Duncan Ferguson. Well, let's hope he doesn't get injured. Who, ben. He, who he says was, uh, you know, a huge influence on him when he was a, a 16-year-old kid breaking mm. into the first team um, for the first time. Yeah, right. Mm. Ben says, I think Porky needs a good smack right between the radar holes. What? Hashtag oh, plank. Mean, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I'm talking about. You Royce, know. Well, no, last week you were insistent yeah. that not only did sharks not have eyes, but yes. that whales didn't have ears either. Uh, Would you like to recant on that one as well? Well, all I said was you tried to make out they had jumbo size ears like elephants or or floppy uh, ears like uh, rabbits. By the way, I meant to ask you, Mm. as it is uh, very much our business uh, and has been for most of our lives, what did you think of the publication of the picture of the Queen giving the Nazi um, salute? I wasn't in favour of it, to be honest. I wasn't wasn't in in favour of the big... I wouldn't wouldn't have done it. No, I don't think so. And I think the fact that the Sun did it on the basis that it was of, quote, historical significance, I thought was a real cheap shot, to be honest. And um, I know that there will be those on either side of the divide that will say that, well, you know, Mm. she must have known what she was doing. I mean, it was 1933, right? Yes. Uh, When an awful lot of people... No, I think it was 37. uh, I I thought it was... Longer ago than that. No, I think it was thirty-seven. Oh, okay. Seriously, but it was certainly before yeah. the war. Well, it, certainly when a t- it, at a time when a lot actually, of people didn't you, have any you, idea. Sorry, you may be right I because think it was thirty-three. Because th- what I'm saying is, every hist- historian who's looked at it has mm. said, "Don't you realise that Adolf Hitler was a figure of fun in those days? Mm. He'd only just been elected to the Chancellorship of Germany, yeah, right. and this silly little wave that he did yeah. was the, the equivalent to." 
Well, in my ter- in my word, you know what uh, Mo Farah does with yeah. that thing on his head? What's yeah. it called? The yeah. Mobo? The Mobo, yeah. Well, it's equivalent of that. Yeah. It was a gesture that little yeah. kids I- imitated. And that well, sort I mean, of thing. And, and even even yeah. if it wasn't, even if there was some, mm. you know, uh, the Queen Mother was somehow, you know, yeah. doing it for whatever reason. Well, I mean, to amuse the, her children, it's presumably. The, it's, the, it's the context that yeah. is, is all important in these things. And but I just fa- think that the, the fact that they did that, yeah. I think, shows that... Um, they kind of. I, I no, would have published that they, picture. I think. I think they misrepresented the kind of. Or they, they mis. They misjudged anyway the attitude of the public. And I think most people in Britain thought, well, that's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. To you know, blame a little child of mm. seven or eight years of age, yeah. even if she is the queen, for for being so uh, politically motivated. Particularly given what then happened, yeah. which was that the Queen Mother stayed in London exactly. during the Blitz. That yeah. you know the the Queen herself was driving around in in in, uh, in army lorries. That's right. You know, helping people and bringing aid. To, I mean, it's just. It, it wasn't so much, you know, because mm. they, they tried mm. to do it in a kind of, what I call a kind of a sleazy way. Yes. By saying, you know, this is of historical significance. Yeah. Instead of just coming clean and going, we've done this because this these people picture. are going to draw the conclusion yeah. that the Queen's a Nazi. Yeah. And that's really what they I were know, doing. I know, I know. And yeah, I think it was yeah. wrong. It, it, completely wrong. And by the way, they've been trying to justify it ever since. Yeah. Have you seen the leaders they've written in the yeah. last couple of days? Oh, yeah. you know, why we had to publish this? Uh, mm. you know, and then, oh, get Mr Whittingdale, you know, yeah. the culture secretary, to comment on it. Right. And of course, John Whittingdale said, look, in a free press, anybody can print what they want yeah. to print, you know. Yeah. But it doesn't mean to say it tries to wrong or anything else. an element of good taste and judgment, which yeah. comes with yeah. being the editor of a newspaper. Yeah, you I, would have thought. I, I would not have published it on the basis... If that had been brought to me as the editor of, of a mass circulation news newspaper yeah. i just said the problem with that is we will look like we're trying to give the wrong impression yeah. about the exactly. queen therefore we're not going to publish Which it. they knew that was the yeah. wrong impression to give yeah. as well exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah but even more bizarrely mm. um i was reading today that mm. there's going to be more of this coming up because prince philip is the subject of a documentary which is going to be coming yes. out on channel four yes. uh, in which they're going to be linking him with all kinds of members of his family who mm. were nazi sympathizers and all this kind of stuff yeah and you know it's all very historical i know, I know that there's mm. a kind of you know an agenda mm. from some of these organizations to be anti-monarchy yeah. and all of that and to yeah. turn people against prince philip but the effect of it is actually that the people who like prince philip mm. or the queen yeah. will continue to yeah, exactly. and the people who don't like them yeah, totally will agree. continue not to and totally I mean, agree. You know, prince philip fought in the war yeah. on our side oh he did yeah he was, a, he was he a decorated war he, hero he, he was yeah definitely and and the other thing about this uh, this picture it was uh, still taken from a 20 second yeah. uh, cine uh, screen yeah, um, like a home movie like a home movie type yeah. thing and it came out of the royal archives yeah and security surrounding the Royal Archives is very, very uh, tight. Yeah. Nobody is allowed to ever take any material no. away or anything well, like that. Well, the story that. that I saw today, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it was in the Standard, yes. said that you know they believe it may have been sent to somebody by mistake. Oh, I see. Um, and that you know it may not have been stolen. Or oh, I see. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. That, you know, there were somebody's copied it. There yeah. were bits of, of, of footage from this particular home video that was yeah, sent I to see. these documentary filmmakers, yeah. and one of them has has leaked it in some yeah, way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. it's almost like a kind of a, a sort of schoolboy type thing to do. Yeah, you know, it is. Go, yes. oh, look, they've got a picture of the Queen. Yeah, I agree. Making a Nazi salute. I agree. And you go well, you know, you really is that what you, is that the best you can come up with? Exactly. I, 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 I like you. I'm I don't, quite I don't glad know. we agree. We do actually quite often agree. Yeah, on yeah. Things, I don't know yeah. what the point of it was. Honestly, no. I really don't. So, but no. you know, uh, I was quite surprised with myself thinking that because I thought, oh no, publish and be damned. Yeah. You know, why shouldn't you? But I regard the Queen as having been such a servant to this country, yeah. particularly as in a few months' time she'll have been the longest-serving monarch ever mm. overtaken uh, Queen Victoria. Yeah. And the woman will still be with us when she's a hundred. And mm. I just think it was an Pretty despicable type of, yes. you know, d- attempt to slur her. Yeah. Why would you want to slur the Queen? I know. You know? I know. Yeah, and yeah. it plays all only into the hands of those people who just hate the idea of the monarchy. Yeah, exactly. Anyway and gives them more sort of sucker. But as far as I'm concerned, exactly. nothing's, nothing's, nothing has changed. You no. know, the Queen's no, views no. on the world have not changed. Yeah. And my views on the Queen haven't changed. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. But I'm glad you asked me about that. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought we'd get that out of the way. Now then, uh, what else were we talking about there? Oh, yeah. Now, I want to tell you about weather. Yeah. Shall I tell you about weather? Because we were weather. talking about... Um, we we're talking about uh, you know weather at the well. One uh, of the things that's interesting opens, about yeah. this great country of ours uh, yes. is that the weather in St Andrews could be so awful. Yes. Uh, over the course of four days, right? Yeah, it can and yeah. As, as indeed in mm. Newcastle, right? I don't think we really saw much sunshine at Newcastle no. over there. In fact, I think on Sunday morning, yeah, um, there was a massive rainstorm. It was raining, which, yeah, which dropped the it was raining uh, when I went out. Dropped the temperature down to sort of another. Mm. Five or six degrees. It was down around about ten or eleven. So when we got was, back yeah. down south, yes. as I say, it yes. was even more shocking. It was twenty-six degrees in London. It was, yeah. Do you know the other phenomenon about uh, Newcastle mm. is that um, in other cities I've been to in this country, where we've been recently, Manchester and Birmingham, yeah. uh, Weatherspoons opened at nine o'clock on a Sunday. Uh-huh. In Newcastle, they don't open till ten. 
Are you sure? I'm absolutely certain. Because I went out for breakfast, mm. right? Yes. Um, again, I'm afraid that I don't wish to cast aspersions mm. on your hotel uh, booking yes. prowess. But yes. there was well, I don't book them, do I? Our breakfast was not included, mm. right? Mm. And I £16. Was, pounds, I was told they wanted about £16 quid for breakfast. I know. Oh, and I thought to myself, well, here's an opportunity. It was half past eight in the morning. Yes. I think I'll go out and see. And because uh, the night before, mm. I'd seen people wandering into the hotel bladdered yes. with pizzas and, uh, yes. you know, McDonald's all and all sorts that. of things. So I'm thinking, well, there must be a place somewhere around. near here. So and did I you walked, find it? Well, I walked down the road mm. and came to a big sort of shopping street, yes. a big shopping centre. Yes. And there were two pubs right. uh, which were open. Right. Now, neither one of them looked technically like a Weatherspoons, but they were Weatherspoons-style places. They right? serve breakfast from 8 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they don't serve beer until oh. until 10, well, whereas I'm in sure. Manchester and Birmingham it was really? 9. I'm sure Not I saw... that I was desperate for a beer at 9 o'clock after well, I, mean, I don't think yeah. that's a bad thing. no. Given it's Sunday morning as well, well right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're supposed to be going to church, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. But anyway, look, let me but, get back but, to... But anyway, yeah, no, on. well, hang on. I'm finished my story. Yet. Right, go on. I'm sure I saw two people... There were two... There was a couple mm. standing outside... Yeah. ...smoking... Uh, outside this one pub, and I'm sure they both had a beer. Well, maybe they did. Maybe they did. Maybe um, it's just a Weatherspoons thing. Ma- maybe I don't know. But listen, uh, we've got to watch out what's going to happen to um, to the weather because uh, I've been keeping in touch with people in all parts of the world, mostly South America. To uh, you've been keeping in touch with people in South America. Yeah, 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 definitely. Why is that then? Uh, well, because they have uh, what's called the uh, El Nino phenomenon. El Nino. El Nino, yeah. right? which is the uh, freak changes in the Pacific Ocean, all to do with the Gulf Stream and all that kind of stuff, OK? Yeah. And they are reporting back that there are dramatic shifts in the way that El Nino is behaving. Last time it happened was in uh, uh, 2010, and we were almost crippled by snow, ice and freezing temperatures that year. Were we? Yeah, and the... Um... I don't remember 2010 yeah, particularly. Yeah. I, do oh, remember, yeah. I remember one particular winter Oh yes, when uh, the trains were hardly running. That's and, right, and the I mean, snow that, was four foot deep. That was one of that. the reasons I got four-wheel drive car, because yeah, I thought, you exactly. know, if, if the trains are not running and the snow is there, yeah. uh, well, I'm going to need it to get on the roads. Yes, that's right. Now then, uh, let me just uh, tell you, you see, uh, I have a mate who runs the Peruvian fish industry. What? Uh, yeah, in Peru, he runs the you've, fish industry. You've got a mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Uh, it doesn't matter. I, well, I don't, well, I don't he's want to. No, I don't want to tell you. You don't want to give us. No, his, no, no, well, no. You suddenly change the habits of a lifetime. No, 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 no. no. Names out. No, he runs this Peruvian fish industry, and he says it's going to be devastating because the coastal wind directions have prevented nutrient-rich water uh, rising and feeding the fish, who are all dying off. Okay. Why are they dying off then? Because the Peruvian fish industry can't catch them because they're not there. The Peruvian fish industry can't catch the yeah, fish because they're not there. That, that's right, because the nutrient water's not there. Well, okay? why don't they go and find where the fish are? Well, they can't because they don't know where they are. And the uh, Pacific Ocean's a big place. They might have gone a long way away and the boats won't get out there. Now, um, the Met Office in this country mm. is, in fact, going to say that uh, you can see food prices rising in South America soon as El Nino and the effects it has damages crops. Yeah, Scientists have been predicting a, a significant El Nino... And the Met Office in Britain forecasts now agree on at least a moderate event. Uh, it will have a huge... Im- <laughs> what, what are you, what are you, what are you I don't understand Hang what on. you're saying. Hang on, it has a huge impact on the Indian monsoon affecting crops and global prices of everything from coffee to the collapse of eastern fisheries. So this is an Indian monsoon yes. that's going to have an effect on the, f- the fish in Peru Yes, uh, and the price of fish indeed in yes. Sevenoaks. Yes, it can cause breaks in the monsoon and drought... While in eastern Australia, there's a bigger risk of it being drier and warmer. That, again, could affect the um, the world price of commodities. Yeah, how's the iron ore price these days? Well, that's sunk, hasn't it? Because Has the it still demand, sunk? Yeah, well, demand in China's gone right down. Great picture here from Frazzle, which is one of the reasons I was oh, yes. uh, laughing. He says, maybe this could be Porky's Bournemouth uh, um, oh, yeah, that's Bournemouth forfeit. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I like uh, that. A, a, a surfing display Lancelot sure, style. Sure, sure. Now, back in 2010, mm. I'm still rambling on about this. I don't know it, why. It, it caused the I jet stream. I don't know stream. who your mate is in Peru. Hang on, it, uh, it caused the jet stream passing over the the, uh, the north of England to shift, bringing snow and ice off Scandinavia and the Arctic. Okay, uh-huh. and forecasters have been warning of severe weather for weeks. And in late November, snow-laden crowds drifted over the north of uh, England. Snow-laden so, crowds. Yep, yeah, clouds, clouds. Right. So we've got to watch it very, very carefully indeed, because I do think there's going to be a very severe winter based on the El Nino effect um, of the on the Gulf Stream around the coast of South America, which affects, amongst other things, the decimation of the Peruvian uh, fish industry. Yeah, I okay? see. Well, I mean, it's all very well warning of these yep. great catastrophes to come, but you haven't got one right yet, have you? 
What do you mean? Well, you haven't got any of these predictions of yours right. I haven't predicted any of the catastrophes. I'm going to be asking you for a prediction in the next hour, actually. Right. So I don't want you to say there's going to be a catastrophe. You're always predicting some kind of catastrophe. No, I haven't. I, I can't remember predicting any uh, any other sort of uh, You're catastrophe. You're saying there's going to be some kind of horrendous thing happening. No. I'd actually welcome a hard winter because last winter we didn't have any snow at all. Yes. And the kids were very disappointed. Yeah, well, uh, A, a there's that. Uh, B. I mean, uh, we've got one here, right, from, yep. uh, uh, from one of the listeners. Uh, mm. I'm going to call him EP because I don't okay. like the name of his Twitter. Right. He says, what about the mini ice age that's coming in 2030? Is yeah. that still coming as well? Yeah, that's still coming. I'm sure it will be mm. because that's, uh, that's cyclical. The other, um, but the other good thing about um, climate and all that kind of stuff, I touched on it last week but didn't give you a full report, oh, yeah. the, uh, the cod industry in the North Sea has revived. Did I tell you that? No. I did, I I'm didn't sure. Reali- I didn't realise the cod industry had, had uh, declined. Yeah, yeah, the cod industry in, in the North Sea has revived itself, oh, yeah. and that's because we've had limitations on the amount of fishing that was allowed there, and, uh, and, and the fish is, um, is now back in abundance, which means it'll keep down the cost of your cotton chips. Mm. OK? Well, here's one from Benjamin. He says, maybe the fish have wised up, or maybe they've all grown legs and walked away. Apropos Peru. No, 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 no. Look, I don't mind having a laugh. the time, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you don't worry about the time. I do worry about the time. I don't mind having a laugh and a shout, but this is a very, very serious problem. The world climate is going to radically shift uh, towards the end of this year. And it could... We're out of time. It it could have an effect. The great Ferrero Rocher drought of Mm -hmm. 2014 didn't happen, he wants to remind you. Uh, And Frazzle says, Paul, you should go back to the Express. uh, Hashtag daily wild weather splash. Mm, Uh, mm. And Roy says, scientists have been predicting El Nino for years. Last year was going to be a huge snow year. uh, And here slopes were closed by May the 1st. Yeah, yeah. well, Mm. you know, I've told you all about it. That's all you need to know, Okay. Yeah, and John says, I actually Mm. like Porky's voice. It reminds me of a mix between Lulu and a constipated Mick Hucknall. What? Which seems a bit harsh. And then uh, here's one from Captain Beefheart. uh, He says, so Porky is a new Nostradamus, more like (laughs) Plankodamus. Okay, That's a bit harsh, like isn't it? Yeah. Now, listen, I want to talk to you about several things. Yeah, go on. Um, first of all, this film, The Ant, OK? Yeah. Now, this will be well, the sort of... It's not The Ant, is it? It's Ant-Man. Ant-Man, that's right, yeah, the Ant-Man, that's have right. Have you seen it? No, but uh, well, I listen... I thought you might have gone to the cinema no, over no, the weekend. No, 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 but it's the sort of thing that you'll take your boys to see, probably, because it'll become well, a huge sort of hit. Well, funnily kind of enough, stuff, I mean, John Hearn, who does yeah. our uh, movie thing, yeah. uh, was talking yeah. about it this yeah. week, Yeah. and I said, well, it sounds like they're really running out of ideas here, because, I mean, a superhero that turns into an ant... juiced into an ant That doesn't sound very good. No. I mean, what if there was an anteater? Yeah, exactly. Surely the anteater would just eat him, and that'd be the end yeah. of the movie. Yeah, but listen to this. this. This girl's name is Camilla Long, and she's the film reviewer for right. the Sunday Times, oh, OK? Yeah. OK. So that's a very prestigious post, and uh, carries a lot of weight. Yes. She says, there is something seriously humiliating about reviewing a film as preposterous as Ant-Man, yeah. especially when it comes to explaining exactly what his silly superpower is. Is he just busy, scratchy, constantly carrying a single grain of rice around above his head. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, I mean, because you know how ants tend, are, are said to be able to carry yeah, their you know, own many body more, many more, No, many more times their own body oh, weight. Oh, really? But yeah. nevertheless, they're still very small. Right, OK, So if you yeah. see them carrying, like, a grain of rice yeah. or a twig, yeah. you kind of go, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I can't imagine wanting to watch a film about she it. She says, the guy turns out to be an irritating, malformed speck of dust... Um, the director, Peyton Reed, uh, no, I've never heard of him either, has taken the being really tiny thing to its natural limits, unimaginatively casting one of Hollywood's smaller actors, a man called Paul Rudd, as the man in the minuscule suit. Rudd is a former heartthrob turned second-tier comedian, best known for his roles in some romance film called Clueless and Friends. Now, the point is, um, isn't Michael Douglas in this film? Um, I've no idea. Yeah, Michael Douglas is in this You're film. You're the one who's done all reading. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. What does yeah, he play, then? yeah. Uh, well, he plays a guy... Ant-Man's dad or something? No, I think he's the Ant-Man inventor. Oh, is he? I think he's the Ant-Man inventor uh-huh. or something, yeah. But, no, what I'm saying is, I can't possibly grasp the idea of a Batman or Spider-Man or Superman-type figure uh-huh. being as small as an ant. Well, I, no. I don't get it. Unless he becomes a giant ant. I don't get it. No, he's, no he's not. He's a, he's a tiny ant. Mm. Tiny ant. Because, um, I mean, if you were a tiny ant yes. and you had superpowers, yes. right, yeah. they would still be pretty useless powers when you compare them to everything else. Yeah. And presumably it might be all right for you to be able to get in and out of houses. Yeah. But well, then you couldn't take anything, could Well, you? sure. But I, I do think it's ridiculous, honestly. Mm. Um, but if they I, were to make a superhero out of you, what do you y- think it would be? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? It's a pretty straightforward question. Well, it wouldn't question. turn me into an ant. See, I don't like ants either. I think ants are creepy. Are they? And horrible. You're frightened of them. Well, a giant ant. I mean, imagine being... There was a... Um, there was a uh... you ever have, have you ever had an ant infestation? 
I get it sometimes in the old roof garden, the, but I've got special powder I put down to mm, wipe them out. And anti ant powder. Yeah, I, I sometimes give them the boiling kettle treatment. No, I get rid of them pretty quickly. That's yeah, horrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, ants it's a very, very intelligent creature. No, it's instant. Don't I went worry. to a natural history museum in uh, right. Connecticut when I was over there last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And they've got this huge um, room. Yes. And what they've done is they've constructed a kind of an ant's world yes. behind a glass, right? Right. And you see where they, what they do, and you see them all walking, and the queen is at one end, yeah. and they all walk carrying some kind of tribute to the queen yeah. down to the queen's sort of lair. Really? Um, yeah. And then they walk back in, a, you know, and, and there's, there's all right. sorts of uh, different levels where yes. there's different levels of ants work. Yes. I and mean, it's quite fascinating. Yeah, OK. You should, sounds... not, you should not destroy ants. Sounds good. Um, now, you know... I like ant hills. Uh, I had one in the, I no, one in the garden. I don't. I don't. I read a. Uh, I read when you a, say sounds good, yeah. you're not really. You don't really mean that, do you? What do you mean? Well, I've just yeah, been sounds, you about... yeah, no, no, sounds good. I saw a Harold Robbins. Uh, uh, I read a Harold, Harold Robbins, Robbins book once. Well, a well-known ant specialist. Well, no, I'm telling you, this this was scary, and it was the one called the Carpetbaggers. Yeah. And that basically detailed... Did they not make a mini-series out of that as well? I think they didn't. But what happened is... Uh, Starring Joan th- Collins and her sister. Th- this this guy found out that uh, his mother had been murdered. Mm. This guy was half Indian, so his mother was an Indian, his father... Well, Native American. Yeah, Native American, and his father was a settler. You uh-huh. see what I mean? A right. white settler. Yeah. And he found out that his mother had been brutally raped and killed by mm. a bunch of cowboys. Yeah. So he spent his life then tracking down the cowboys. Right. When he found them... He pegged the guy out on the ground in Arizona yeah. and he slit his eyelids so that he couldn't close his eyes. Oh. And the effect of that was that the sun would then burn the I corners. This guy wrote like romantic out of his eyes. Uh, no, no, no. He could be quite brutal as well. So, so the that go- sounds horrendous. Yeah, the guy's pinned out, no water yeah. and no food, obviously, and yeah. he's going to die over the next sort of three or four days. Yeah. So, as I say, he slit his eyelids so that the he couldn't close his eyes, mm. so the sun was going to burn his his eyes yeah, to yeah. nothing. You know right. what I mean? But the other thing he did was he made lacerations in his scrotum area. What on his penicular structure and his penicular structure, yeah, yeah and his scrotum area and, and his scrotum <laughs> bag, right? And then he uh, he scooped well, like up. Well, he didn't staple it to his thigh. No, 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 he no. Got shot when he woke up. No, no. And then he went to an ant's nest nearby and scooped up um, a load of uh, ants. Mm. These, these were they red ants? Red ants. They were red they ants. Really, they really, they really red painful, ants. Yeah. And then he plonked it on his on his penicular structure oh. area. Blimey. And the way he died over the next three or four days was from hideous uh, 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 thirst. No wonder you're so twisted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're reading yeah, books yeah. like that for thirst. getting his eyes burnt out by the sun, which eventually got into his brain. Yeah. And the ants literally eating him alive yeah. from the in the in the um, crotch area. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really, what are you laughing at? Well, I mean, it's yeah. not on the face of it a comedic scene. No, no, no. but, but uh, it's just your description. Of yeah, it. but so, so I didn't like ants from Is that the why time it's called I read the carpet that. baggers. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I don't know. That's some but, reference to his yeah, um, yeah. But old I didn't, sack. I, yeah, I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. Like, I didn't like it from uh, from that moment on. You know what I mean? Surprised. Yeah. So Blimey. was Joan Collins in that mini series? No, I can't she wasn't, imagine no. her being part no, of anything no, like that. No, no, she wasn't. No, no, don't worry about that. You're going to bring that picture in of you and her, by the way. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. This week, maybe. Maybe, maybe, but I, I you know, it. I don't like to boast about my connections in the world of show business and I know, that kind of stuff. True. But anyway, there you go. Now, <laughs> what I was going to tell you? Yes, I was going to tell you that um, we're in Newcastle, right? Which is quite far north in uh, in England. It certainly is, and it's not far from the border with Scotland. Not far. Now, did you know there was a point at which actually, mm. and I'm glad I didn't mm. do this because mm. I thought I might, if I was sort of in a fit state to do so, yeah, that so on Sunday maybe drive up to Edinburgh. Oh, right, and show the guys around Edinburgh. Yeah. But, in the end, that probably would have been a bad idea. So well, we'll do it. I mean, but it's still a bit. It's a couple of hours from Edinburgh. Well, that would have been quite nice to have gone up there, but then you got a six-hour journey back. Yeah, I know. so that would have been. Well, the... I could have done that on the Monday. See, I thought. Oh, about I doing see. That. Mean, yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. But no, then I would have been even more tired than I was. So well, there I you go. Against it. But anyway, look, uh, I found out from my research that uh, young Scottish people now are trying to get rid of their Scottish accent. Are they? Because they think it'd get on better in the world without one. Yeah. How about that? Well, I mean, I think I'm sure that might have something to do with the current sort of bad mm. feeling around mm. the whole Scottish independence issue. Is that right? Because I think there's yeah. been a lot of people in Scotland who have become quite sort of disenchanted with the right. opposing side. Right. Whichever side they're on. Yeah. You know, people have kind of fallen out. People in families right. have fallen out because some have wanted independence, some haven't. Yeah. And the whole kind of, you know... Uh, adject, uh, uh, sort of, you know, introduction of all okay. these fifty-six SNP. I can see by yeah, the way yeah. you're saying it. You no, want no. to hurry up, no, but no. you know, so it may well be that in in England, I haven't, mm, I wouldn't, mm, I wouldn't say mm. that I've encountered this, but mm. I wonder whether because of Scottish independence yes, now yes, in England, yes. if you speak with a Scottish accent, people yeah. go, 
Well, you're one of those that wants to break up from uh, from the the main uh, main event. Because you lived there and you are amongst those people, you'll be able to understand this better than me. Um, Now, I'm Brew Porridge. The R's that make the accent so distinctive are dying out, right? Yeah, so so research shows... What's that noise? Is that a shark again? Yeah, I don't know. Research shows that many young Scots no longer emphasise the R Uh at the end of words such as car, Car. bar, bar, and fur. And what? Fur. Fur. Yeah, if you are, fur. fur. Well, it's more of a short R, really, than a yeah. long R. Fur. So, so, so working-class youngsters are particularly likely to swallow the sound while their middle-class counterparts are favouring one normally associated with American English. Mm. What is well, more... I'll tell you a story, actually, which yeah. you may know. OK. But when I was, uh, when I was born, basically, yes. and before I went to school, mm. and when I learned to speak, I spoke with a Scottish accent. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Why is that funny? Well, go on, give me a Scottish accent now. Well, I could talk to you with a Scottish accent if you want. Yeah, go on, yeah. That was the way I used to speak to my parents, like that. No. Yeah, it's exactly Oh, no, speak. Jimmy. But when I went to school, oh. well, um, people started making fun of me. Yeah. And so I thought, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to talk with an English accent. <laughs> Whoa, I just jumped out my seat there. <laughs> and so then I went home and stopped. We spoke with an English yeah, accent, exactly. and my parents took make fun of me, so yeah. I used to speak with two accents. <laughs> so I used to speak Scottish at home and English in school. That's amazing. So you're bilingual. And my sister did the same. Is that right? Well, because you know, all I knew when I was learning yeah, to was speak as a child speak at home, was yeah. my two parent, my parents, who were both Scottish. Well, it's true. It says, "What is more, the rolling or trilling R associated with the likes of baroom, squirrel, and hurry <laughs> is now very uh, rare." Right, uh, uh, is, where am I going here? Yeah, I'm losing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Mr. Now, Brazil certainly hasn't lost his accent. No, he's now very rare and is in fact dying out. Some ah. blame the Scottish media saturated with English and American accents, but the researchers from the University of Glasgow. And Queen Margaret University in Edinburgh oh, yes. say accents naturally evolve. What um, am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> and they used ultrasound machines to reveal the tongue movement of a group of 12 and 13 year olds as they said a range of words, and it's definitely changing. Really? We find some Scottish speakers are delaying the art gesture, so it's happening in silence. Mm. Yeah. Well, well I mean, maybe we'll have to talk like Andy Murray. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, the match. Oh, oh. It was a very hard match. Well, as long as we don't all start talking like uh, Sean Connery. Uh, uh, what time shall we meet at Wimbledon? Garbage. Tennis? No, I didn't want to play. <laughs> it sounds Dutch. This is talk sport. I don't care. All you got to do is set me free, free, free. Talk Sport, we are the two mics. Coming up it's very, very shortly, it's winners and losers. I'm going to be favouriting this week, and Mr. Parry's going to be retweeting. Uh, but we're going to do something else this week as well, mm-hmm. which I'm going to include uh, you in if you're willing to do it. Yeah. And that's uh, you. Your Selco Predictor is back, right? Mm. So to commemorate it, okay. uh, last week some guy won 500 quid just for registering to, to, to join it this year. Yes. Uh, we want you to make a little prediction. Uh, around this time every night on okay. the show. So, you know, it can be about anything. It doesn't right. have to be sporting. Okay. It doesn't have to be something which is short-term. It can be long-term, yeah. you know. Well, of course, my extensive knowledge of the world yeah. uh, puts me into that category perfectly. It does, yeah. To come on a left field, maybe, okay. and give our listeners some direction about what I think is going to happen mm. in the world which can help them. Right, OK. So yeah. what would you like to make your prediction for well, today? Well, I tell you, I was studying over the weekend mm. as well, yeah. and now you've just thrown this at me, and I didn't know you were going to ask yeah, me know. this, so I this know. is straight off the top of my head. OK. But I know that the Greek drachma will, in my opinion, mm. collapse in three weeks' time. The Greek drachma? Yeah. Uh, sorry, the... Uh, the euro? Uh, the, the euro in Greece will, yeah. will collapse in three weeks' time. The okay. Greek drachma will take over, right? right? OK, so now this... So if you've still got drachma down the yeah. bottom drawer of your holiday uh, the sort of chest of drawers, uh, will they be usable then? Very unlikely, because the those notes were deemed dead when yeah. the drachma went, yeah. and the new drachma will be reprinted in a different uh, form. Okay. It'll have to be, uh. because it's drachma too, if you see yeah. what I mean. Right. Now, uh, having said that, that does not mean that Greek will necessarily exit the EU. What's right. going to happen? What's going to happen? Because I've been mean, talking to international economists right. about this. Okay, you that bloke in Peru about it. As well. uh, no, he's in charge of the Peruvian fishing industry. Uh-huh. He's nothing to do with uh, the Greek drachma. Yeah. Now, um, what's going to happen is that this is the only way out of the uh, the problem. The, the 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 instructions to Greece to get their house in order have now mm. been going on for 15 months. Yeah. And it's not worked, and right. it's still not working. Uh-huh. Angela Merkel will not take this for much longer. Angela. So, uh, so what will happen is, <coughs> excuse me, right. a group of European um, economists will get together. Yeah. They will <coughs> tell Greece they've got to exit the Eurozone, right. the, the Euro currency, yeah. but not the Eurozone. Yeah, OK. Right? So they can still be part of the EU like Britain is. Yes, that's right. And so what's going to happen is the drac will be reintroduced, but this is the caveat, uh-huh. which only I know about, right. OK? 
what's going to happen is, is that actually... It's not all, a Greek word, that caveat, is it? No, it's not. Caveat mm. is a Latin word. Yeah. Um, caviar, caveat, caveus. Uh, now, um, what's going to happen is, is that although drachma will be the official currency of yeah. Greece, yeah. the unofficial currency will still be the euro. Okay. So you see what's going to happen? So you'll be able to use both. You, you, well, you, mostly people will use the euro, yeah. but, but that won't tie them then to the interest rate problems mm. they've got, which they're going to have to alter in the drachma situation, OK? Right. okay. Now, you say, how it's does this work? a very long work? prediction, this. No, no, no. You say, how does this work? I and I'll tell you. That. When I used to go to Russia before yeah. the fall of communism... I was just uh, thinking that. Communism, you dollars, right? You used dollars all yeah. the time, mm. literally. And in some Caribbean countries yeah. now, you just use US dollars. Yeah. You don't use they their local currency. Yeah. Everybody takes dollars. Yeah. Even in South America, in Argentina and places like that, they will take US dollars. Yeah. And what's going to happen? Is, Do you know, when you, I was in Bosnia, they took US dollars. Yeah, of course they will. Yeah, they, during the war. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that's was right. what you had to take. You had to take yeah, dollars. Exa- exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Mm. And so, and so, that's what's going to happen. That's the way out of the euro crisis. Just so I'd let you know, you asked me for a prediction. That's it. All right, that's your prediction. Well, that's a good one. We we'll look forward to another one tomorrow. Right. Uh, because the reason for this is we're getting very excited about the Selco Predictor, uh, which is back this season. It's bigger and it's better. Uh, and of course, uh, you can win all mm. kinds of money. Uh, during the course of the season. Mm. Uh, but last week, just for registering, one listener uh, who was by the name of Douglas Morris actually won 500 quid just for actually signing up. So all you've got to do is head to talksport.com forward slash predictor right now uh, and sign up, and there'll be all sorts of uh, prizes uh, waiting for you. Right now, though, uh, I'm yep. going to give you something That's else good. to listen to, right? Right. Something else to listen to, because you know we talked about the locked tunnel. Yes. And unbeknownst to me... Uh, because word had got around so fast, yeah. uh, you might know that on the Drive show with Adrian Durham and Darren Goff, right. they have a feature called Heads Gone. All right. For people who sort of lost the plot at one reason for one reason right. or another. Have a listen to this. And also Mike Perry, if you've seen the two mics on their live show, it's brilliant, by the way. Uh, they were up in Newcastle. Perry, uh, he had to phone for help. He got stuck on a fire escape. It was in an airlock between two doors. Yeah. He couldn't get out. Uh, uh, and I, I, I don't uh, know what caused his state of mind. Well, what to make do you think? Happen. Doing uh, the show, he probably goes through about three or four bottles doing uh, the show, don't he? Of water? Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. So they put you oh, in the dear, heads gone mate. category. I've no idea how they yeah. found out about it. They got a few facts wrong. Yeah. How it wasn't did they find escape. out about it? You fed them the information, I did not, didn't no, you? I did not feed them. Yes, you did. No, the word went around. The picture mm. went around, I have mm. to say. Yeah. Yeah, the one that's now been tweeted out yeah. on the two mics. Yeah. I might have to retweet it a few Disgraceful. times. But anyway, yeah. well, you know, I yeah, mean, yeah. I was once in, uh, uh, in the heads gone, yeah. and I don't know how they found out about that. And what were you in the heads gone for? I was in the heads gone because I think I tweeted something about mm. how um, I was annoyed because I'd gone into the bank to put some money in. Right. Uh, to like a cash machine. Yeah. Um, yeah and and taking it, money it, out. It, no, it, no it, taken the, it taken the money, but right. it didn't register it. Oh, I see. So I then had to mm. wait around. And, and, and Durham said, what mm. kind of an idiot goes to a cash machine to put yeah. money in? Yeah, yeah. He obviously didn't understand the way that these things work. No, exactly, yeah. yeah. But well, it's not their fault. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. anyway, so, so you've got to mention anyway. I think uh, Adrian's just got married again, hasn't he? Again? Yeah, yeah. so we should offer him our congratulations. He has, yeah, he has yeah. got married. I don't yeah. know if it's again, though. Well done, my married, son. Was he married before? Well, of course he was. He's well, I didn't know that. Had a family and children, all that so kind of stuff. So it's his second marriage. So, yes, exactly. Well, so, uh, so well how about that? He should be in Heads God himself, then, shouldn't he? Well, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat that one or endorse it. Of course, you're the man who shies away from the second marriage, aren't you? Well, it's better than shying away from all marriage, yeah, like yeah. you. Uh, you what? You've shied away from all marriage. No, no, it just never happened, did it? It was one of those things. Mm. Funny enough, funny enough... Um, uh, you had a very strange conversation with a chap up there, didn't you, about uh, a former friend well, of mine? Newcastle. Yeah, very odd uh, conversation. I did. Indeed. Yeah, well, he was talking about, and I'll, I'll do it without trying to give away too many names, well, shall I? Yeah, don't, yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, he said that you had told the story famously, uh, both at the stage show and uh, and on the radio, yeah. about the time that you went back to Newcastle. Mm. To did I actually see... say Newcastle? You did. Yeah, did I? To see whether you could rekindle mm. a previous kind of liaison mm. that you'd had because a certain woman that you used to go out yeah. with had been in touch. Mm. Uh, but she was the woman who, when you saw her entering the public mm. house when mm. you arranged to meet, mm. having put on quite a bit of weight, mm. you decided to run out the other way without yeah. actually deciding to but, meet her. But, but, yeah. but he then said that there was another story that you told about... A, a woman also in Newcastle when you'd right. worked there. Right. And he'd put two and two together mm. uh, because of the job that he did. Yes. And he knew exactly who it was. Right. And he then said that uh, she was devastated. Well, why? Did he story. go and tell her or something? Well, I don't know. I, you know, it's not a oh, massive... It's a very odd story, I mean, this. if Newcastle's anything like Glasgow, yeah. I suspect it is. Yes. It's quite a small town. Yeah. And but people it, in certain businesses tend yeah. to know one another. It's a very and odd story. And he told me the mm. name, mm. which you then confirmed. No, no, it's a very odd story. This nobody I have ever known mm. of female form in Newcastle has ever put on a lot of weight. Well, and, that's a story and, you've told and, many, and many times. No, 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 no. That's well, where was it then? 
Well, it doesn't matter where it was. Well, it does. But, the, but the person you think it was, was it was not that person, Are believe sure? me. Absolutely certain. Well, and, we're not going to repeat and, it anyway. And uh, I certainly didn't want to cause any hurt to anybody. No, and, of course. And if I have, then I apologise, and I'll make sure that uh, I contact those people and put them straight. Yeah, because okay. I couldn't understand why this, uh, this guy suddenly meets you in a bar in Newcastle yeah. and tells you, oh, Pook, he's upset somebody. Yeah. Well, you know, thanks a lot, but he just arrived in town. Yeah, I, I haven't upset anybody. Well, it's not unusual anyway. for you to upset people. No, no, no. Now, let me read you a couple of uh, right. tweets out. Callie says this. Yeah. I was going to cut the grass later today, but the thought of crotch-eating ants has rather put me off. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't blame you. Uh, I don't William blame you. says, that ant story will remind me of a hot, sunny day on the beach. Yep. Um, and uh, here's one from uh, uh, Bill, hmm. uh, who says, for heaven's sake, uh, hmm. nobody in West Central Scotland talks hmm. like a Dutch Gaelic tube porky. <laughs> <laughs> Dialect yeah. plank. No, 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 come on, come on. I, you know, I'm a man of many languages and uh, many uh, variations on many languages, so don't hmm. you worry about it, pal. Yeah. Okay. Craig says, when will the shark quiz be, as Porky is an expert on sharks? Yes. Um, and uh, mm. tell Porky that he isn't allowed to retweet the tweet you send for he can't cheat. Right, OK. I think that's talking about the uh, the winners and losers. Parry locks himself in a room as he abandons his crowd in Newcastle, says Steve. Yeah, well, you know, these things happen. Listen, you told told me a few weeks ago, um, before this terrible story happened, that you quite like seagulls. Uh, no, I've never said that. No, I you hate did. seagulls. Oh, no, no, I think you said no, that you've no, got to protect the seagull. No, you must since be mistaking then, me for somebody else. Was that after the seagull killed a little dog? Um, I think that I was think when was, we were talking about no, it. No, yeah. I think it was before. Well, because you might remember the day that I told yeah. you about when I went to uh, Lyme Regis. And yeah, the they seagulls, trying to attack you. Well, the seagull stole my sunglasses. Yeah, exactly. That's, that was the one. Yeah, me. stole your seagull. Well, since then, a seagull, a seagull has killed a little dog. I know that. But not only that, I found another one over the weekend. A killer seagull swept down... Flipped a pet tortoise over, yeah. right? So yeah. it's on its shell and couldn't yeah. do anything. And then others attacked it while yeah. it was alive. I could see that. It was horrible. They're like, they're a like pet tortoise. Sort of, um, they're like gangs. Yeah, seagulls. A, a pet tortoise pecked to death by seagulls in front of his horrified alive. owner. Pecked alive as well. Y- yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 days after a dog was left for dead in a mm. similar attack in a nearby town. Yeah. I mean, good God, this was in this guard in Cornwall. Yeah. You can't have seagulls going around doing that. We'd have to. Honestly, we'll have to detect war what, in, on seagulls, stop blowing them out the sky. In Hastings, they've got all these kind of seafront uh, fish and chip shops and right. stuff like that. If you yep. sit outside yep. and eat your fish and chips in the middle seagulls of the Seagulls come down and take they your food. They literally come down and land on the table. And they're huge. Yeah, I know. Very I know they are. They're massive seagulls. And, and they're also, they are also mm. protected species. You can't kill well, them. Well, I tell you what, it wouldn't be difficult to wipe them out. You know, just find the right source of spray and all that. No, you're not allowed stuff. to. Yeah, well, you we've got to change the law then if they're getting dangerous. That's another example of your great love for animals. That's right. Now, coming up... It's winners and losers. Talk Sport, we are the two mics, and it is that time of the week. Uh, it is, of course, time for winners and losers. We have already determined that this week it will be retweeting for Mike Parry to win uh, and favouriting for me to win. Uh, mm-hmm. I've just sent out the tweet now, which you can either retweet or favourite as we go. Okay. Uh, the vote will stay. Well, we had an, an argument, did we not, last mm. week about whether we should keep the vote only during the show or whether we should keep it going until mid- no. midnight. No, keep it going till midnight. Do you want to keep it going until midnight? Definitely. Do you keep it going all week? No, no, keep it going till midnight. I want a result t- tomorrow night. Because a lot, of people, show. See, a lot of people think it's unfair yeah. that those who are not listening to the show yes. and who have quite openly admitted that they're voting for you no matter what yes. uh, are, are adding to the numbers. Well, no, but then people want to listen to the podcast and a lot of people yeah, pick up this programme on the podcast. Some of them vote without listening to either the show or the podcast. Well, you know... I, I, I don't think you should have those kind no, of No, no, we've got to give them the, uh, the opportunity, definitely. All right, OK. OK. Well, would you like to go first with your three losers of the weekend? OK, my three losers are brilliant. Go on, I say it, Myself, okay. Um, first of all, the first loser is Sir Nick Faldo. Sir Nick Faldo. He finished last in the ratings in the Open, mm. and considering he's a three-time winner of that competition, including twice, I think it's in when Andrews. When you say finished last, yeah. you mean he completely lost? He completely lost on he, Friday. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't make right the weekend. at the bottom, right? And uh, it'll be his last one ever. What's it called? The Swilburn Bridge. Swilkin. The Swilkin Bridge. Swilkin. And he's pictured on there. Mm. And he had the same jumper on that he wore the time he won his first Open well, at St. Nice Andrews. Touch, Quite a nice touch, but mm. it just emphasised how far 
he's come and well, gone. Well, he said himself he's no longer yeah. a professional golfer. He doesn't even play golf very much. No, but I don't know why these guys keep going on well, and on. Fancy. Well, you said all this no. last week. No, I didn't. This is a terrible no, entry. I did. no. You said all Rubbish. of this last week. About who? About Nick Fowler. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You well, what I'm saying is... You said he shouldn't be playing. What I'm saying is he finished bottom, so if I mm. said it last week, I've endorsed it now, and he goes no. to the top of my loser list, OK? Right. OK. The second loser, the mm. second loser is... Um, who, uh, is who is it? It's Ashley Madison. Ashley Madison. Ashley Madison. That's not a person. Ashley Madison is a website. Yeah. And somebody has nicked a million entries on that website. That's true. The problem is yeah. the website is about people who are infidelious yes. in their marriages. They wish to have affairs, yeah. and, and are knocking off other people who mm. are not their wives or, or husbands. Or certainly wishing to. Or wishing yeah. to. And the details that have been leaked, mm. so Ashley Madison, I'm afraid, well, has they suddenly... Le- they haven't leaked the details yet, have they? Uh, They're threatening uh, to. Exactly. Has spilt the, uh, the details mm. of a million infidelious people. Yeah. That is massive. That makes them the loser of all time, not just the week. Right, they're the not third. even your first loser. Sorry? How can they be the loser of all time? It's not even your first choice. Well, well. specifically, it's Nick Faldo tonight, I'm afraid. Or Sir Nick Faldo, I should say. Yeah. Terrible, that, to finish last in the Open when you've won it three times. And the third loser, and this is a great one, is a man called Graham Quinn. Oh, yeah. And do you know why? Why? He used to be Mylene Class's husband. Oh, yes. And she is now so angry with him, she says that she's never going to marry a man again who ends up getting away with some of her money. Yes. and They've, treat- they've had a bit of a spat on they've had a spat, social they, media, haven't they? They've hardly spoken for Funny the last enough, three years. She didn't years. mention it when I spoke to her at Piers' party. No, well, I wouldn't think she would, no. No, no and, well, that's another reason why uh, why there's a loser situation going on here. But Mylene Class is one of the most beautiful women in the public she eye. Is. She wore the white bikini in the uh, Get Me Out of Here jungle, all that kind of stuff. You couldn't yeah. imagine that any man could be anything other than absolutely grovelling and charming to a woman like that. And yet this guy... According to Mylene Class, yeah. ripped uh, her off and uh, turned out he not disputes to... that, of course. He yeah, says, y- You yes. tell me how I did that, yes, yes, and turned out so not it's, to be. It's, it's an unfortunate kind of interpersonal row, well, it, well, the, it is. the truth of which we don't know. It is you're siding with her because you like the way she looks. Well, I'm also which makes call you a bit of a loser, I'm also honest. calling him a real loser. Well, how be- do you know that? Well, because Mylene Class is talking about him in such. Well, Desul- but that doesn't make her right, though, does it? terms. Well, it doesn't make well, her right. Well, it, 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 his image is destroyed forever now. He's been branded... Well, he doesn't a, have an image. He's been branded a loser by Mylene Class, and as she is one of world's winners with an £11 million fortune, that, yeah, to see, me... Yeah, see, that's why you think she's that, a winner. Yeah, yeah. she's got money yeah, and she looks yeah. good in a white bikini. Yeah, that's right. Not at all shallow of you. That, no, that's, that's right. So they're my three losers. I recommend to this house that they are brilliant. You don't have to recommend them to a house, mm-hmm. OK? It's a radio show. Yeah. Right, my first loser was James McLean. James McLean. Do you know who he is? No. He plays for West Brom. Oh, well, uh, this is a... Uh, funny enough, I'll be talking to the good people of Ulster about him tomorrow. Oh, on will the, you? On oh, well, another uh, one of your radio yes, appearances. Yeah. Oh, um, well, I hope it goes well. My mate Stephen Nolan. Yeah, yeah. well, I hope yeah. it goes well. Thank Thanks you. again for giving a plug to another radio station. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry helpful. about that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, he is, of course, yeah. the Republic of Ireland footballer. Yes. Uh, who I think is the biggest loser of the weekend. Mm. Uh, seen uh, to turn away from the flag of St George yes. as he stood alongside his teammates mm. lining up to face a team uh, over in South Carolina That's right. called the Charleston Battery. Yes. Um, and the pictures really tell the story. They do. He's done it before. He's a guy who refused to wear a poppy on his kit in the run-up to Remembrance Sunday. Uh, he says that he believes very much in uh, his cause and mm. his people and all of that. Yeah. Lots of people all over the place saying, well, mm. he doesn't mind taking the, uh, the exactly. king's shilling, the money, as it yeah. were. Uh, and if he feels that yeah. strongly, maybe yeah. he shouldn't be playing for, for an English team. Mm. You know, I, I don't mind people having principles, but I think there's a certain... Mm. Code of conduct, and certainly in a team, yeah. you should really behave and in a way that the, the rest thing of the is, team of course, play. Being over in America, there, mm. he's wearing a West Brom United, uh, sorry, a West Brom Chalbian shirt. Yeah. How do the Americans feel about? Well, hang on, is that is that a statement from the whole of the club? And yeah. is it a statement from everybody yeah. wearing a, a West Brom shirt? Does he mm. represent that football club? Yeah. It's a shocking thing yeah. to have done. And 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 he's, uh, his manager's mm. told him not to do it again. Mm. And you know mm. they're obviously going to have problems in the future with this guy. But yeah. uh, I just think he's a massive loser for doing that. Yeah. Without really. You yeah, know, that's not a bad one. You know, he doesn't need to, to draw mm. his attention to all of that. Mm. My second loser is obviously Alistair Cook. Yeah. You know, the man who said before mm. uh, the Ashes started, you know, we won't let you down. Yes. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, he let not only him, himself mm. down but by, by, by getting mm. put out mm. in, as part of that mm. mega collapse on Sunday. Yeah. But he doesn't seem to have a clue as to how to make things any better. How yeah. you can go from winning the first test mm. so so brilliantly so to losing the second one more comprehensively mm. than that yeah. just absolutely beggars belief. And my final uh, loser of the weekend is Aston Villa. Because yeah. it looks very much as though uh, Christian Benteke uh, is going to have his mm. medical at Liverpool. He's mm. going to go there for 32.5 mm. million. Mm. Do you know they're going to get to replace him? Um, 
Somebody did tell me. Emmanuel Adebayor. Adebayor, that's right. An aging... Because uh, your mate Steve Sherwood yeah. obviously was one of the guys who yes. he was able to make him play slightly. So yes. They're going to get Adebayor at Aston Villa yeah. uh, for Benteke, which I don't think is a very good deal. Uh, unbelievable. So but I think you'd agree that all my three losers are better than yours. No, no. Aston Villa are very general. And, uh, not at all general. And, and you could have called them the loser for the last 10 weeks. I no, mean, uh, not true. Um, no. The, uh, the, this is very specific. Yeah, quite like the first one, and I can't remember who the second one was. You can't oh, yeah, remember yeah, the yeah, second Alistair one. Cook. Yeah, Alistair but I mean, Cook. again, a very, very obvious. Really? Right. Let's get right. on with the winners. Well, let's get on with the winners. Yeah. Again? I'll go first, yeah. Right, okay. And mine are very simple and very quick, okay? Yeah, go on. First one are Carl Froch, because he announced on this show that he was retiring at the top of his he didn't game. He announced on this show. At be- all. He certainly did to Mr. Brazil. On this show? Uh, sorry, on this station. No, he didn't. On this he station. Had, no, he didn't the announce station. it to Alan yeah, Brazil. Yeah, he, he announced did. it on yeah. Sky TV. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm telling well, you. You got it wrong already. I'm telling you the first, Two things you got the wrong. first time that TalkSport listeners were, became aware of it, because they might not have been watching Sky TV. Right. Was on the Alan Brazil show well, I know, on this very station. Yeah, well, that's fine. So I make Carl Froch a winner. I don't see how a, you can. A because he he retired undefeated. He, he got out at the right time. Mm. Aging boxers who, who lose all their marbles and their fortune are pathetic people. Carl Froch is not, and he announced it on this station. So that to me is a winner. The second winner is Wayne Rooney because Wayne Rooney will be starting this season now as Manchester that's United's pathetic. main striker. Pathetic. As Manchester United's main striker for the first time in four years, he's able to actually do the job that he was brought on this earth to do and uh-huh. that is to play as a striker and score goals and the, and the too many managers of Mickey Mouse to mess them around international managers club managers Sir Alex Ferguson David Moyes uh, Louis van Gaal and now he's going to be playing in that um, striker role he should have been playing since he was 16 and the third winner and nobody can argue with this and we've just been talking about it uh-huh. ourselves and you are in full agreement with me the third winner I thought you could say us no is the Queen because the Queen retains her dignity and the love and affection of all her subjects. I think that even though, you. even though, even though somebody is trying to smear her as having been a child Nazi of all things, right. ludicrous and ridiculous. The Queen, I say to you, the best winner of all. I say to you, what are you telling to Tony Blair? Yes, I yes. say to you, this is not the time for uh, mm. Uh, mm. cliches, right? Mm. Well, I've got three winners who are far better than that, right? The first one is Mick Fanning. You know who Mick Fanning is? Never heard of him. You've never heard of Mick Fanning? Never heard of Mick Fanning. Well, that makes you neither a loser. Is, neither is the audience. That makes you a loser, because he, of course, mm. is the Australian surfer uh, who beat off the shark mm. and actually managed to uh, save himself from mm. being eaten by a shark. As he well, was an idiot forth. for getting in the same water as a shark. Well, he's a surfer. Mm. Well, so that's what happens. He should have, he should have had a lookout or something. Yeah. Uh, Blithering idiot. Yeah. Bl- <laughs> that's very harsh. Mm. Now, my second winner is Paul Dunn. Have you mm-hmm. heard of Paul Dunn? Never heard of him. Never so heard you're of a him. student of the game of golf and you've yeah. never heard of Paul Dunn. Never heard of this him. This was the guy who was the amateur who was leading the Open going he, into he Monday He should be morning. on your loser list. Why? He was right at the top of the leaderboard yeah, after the third day yeah. and then sunk without trace on the last he day. He didn't sink without trace. Yes, he, he did. had a final round of 78, God, which was a bit pathetic. tough for him. So it meant actually in pathetic. the end... Pathetic. Loser, he, loser, no, loser. This guy, not a winner. No, this guy from Ireland raised mm. his profile in such mm. a way that he will be, by all means, a that's, massive that's winner. Don't you worry. That's two non-entities no, so he will far. Be, he will be a massive mm. winner uh, in years to come because mm. he, he'll mm. get picked up by... By a couple of sponsors, he's going to turn pro. Pathetic. He's going to turn pro this year mm. later on, and uh, I, th- mm. I wish him the best of luck. And I think he's done terribly well mm. to break to raise the. I mean, the level. I mean, you, what you don't understand is yeah. to, to lead the Open, mm. even if it's only for ten minutes. Yeah. as an amateur, yeah. is the most incredible yeah. feat of achievement. Uh, and how much prize money has he lost? Well, he doesn't get prize money. He's exactly, an amateur. exactly. If he did turn professional before the competition, no. the idiot man would now have half a million bucks in his See, pocket. This is how little you know about? Golf. No, 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 no. He's shocking. He, because he didn't turn professional, I mean, he's a complete loser. He lost the lead at the start of the fourth day. He lost all the money he could have won, and you're calling him a winner. Mm. Strange idea of winners, you I've are. just got an update for you, by the way, yep. on your uh, claim that Nick Faldo came yep. last. Yep. He didn't. He did. Uh, somebody called Gary Boyd did. No, 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 Nick and Faldo Tom, did. And Tom Watson was one shot ahead of him. No, no, So no. I'm afraid no, no. you might as well be no, chucked no. out with that. No, no. Now, my final no. winner of the no. weekend, and no. I think you'll appreciate this one, right. is your old friend... Uh, the leader of North Korea, Mr Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Do you know why? Uh, hang on, because he's... Hasn't he ordered women to raise the sh- <laughs> sh- their skirts higher? No. No, no, he has. No, he he's hasn't. O- he's ordered women, I'm telling you, he's ordered women in Korea to wear shorter skirts. No, he hasn't. Oh, OK. That's not why he's a winner, okay. uh, even if he has done that. Mm. Uh, he's had an election, would you believe? Mm-hmm. And, and everybody turned out to vote. 99.97%. 
yeah. uh, turnout for his vote. And believe it or not, uh, they all voted for him. And they all voted for him. Yeah. Not only that, they were singing and dancing mm. as mm. they went to vote for him. They were so ah, happy. They ah, were so happy. Great leader, yeah, great leader. Exactly. Yeah. So Kim Jong-un, yeah. I think, is a fantastic mm. winner this weekend yeah. because, you know, he's one of the few politicians yeah. I who think has that's the total, sick. total and utter support of I his people. I think it's sick. Do you? A man who inflicts so much misery, pain, hardship, mm. um, you know, locks his people up in concentration camps, starves Locked them, rooms. makes them eat bark off trees because <laughs> there's no food in North Korea. Really? And you're calling him a winner? That's sick. He's a winner. All three of just... your winners are disgraceful choices. Yeah. I urge the audience, vote for Porky. Well, yours is uh, incorrect as well, apart nope. from the fact that Nick Fowler nope. did not come last. So, uh, if you wish, you can favourite uh, for me, uh, or you can retweet for Mike Parry. Yes. Uh, the tweets are yes. out there. Just follow us at the two mics. The uh, voting will be yes. until midnight Vote tonight. for me. We, and I'll expect a 99.97% voter turnout, just like Kim Jong-un. Vote for Paul Kim. Vote often. This is Talk Sport. I want to break free. I want to break free. I tell you what, when I hear this song, yeah. all I'm going to think of is that picture of you behind, <laughs> behind the frosted glass. Oh, really? It's brilliant. Well, I was. I want to break free. It was. I Is was, that what you said when you rang? No, no, I was not entrapment, but uh, luckily I managed to get through to somebody. Uh, that somebody being Emma. <laughs> I know if I'd have rung you, you'd have just started laughing and mocking. No, and no, so, I wouldn't. I would yes. have, no, I would have said, no, listen, I'll be right there. Yeah, yeah. And then I would have just taken like a couple of hours yeah, to get to exactly, you. Yeah, exactly. That's I what knew I would that. have done. I knew that. I'm told your exact words were, I'm stuck in a tunnel under the theatre. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I was, unfortunately. But yeah. anyway, anyway. It's, Unfor- uh, no, unfortunately, they let you out. Yeah, now, yeah, a couple yeah, of yeah. tweets here from Freddie. Uh, very poor performance from Porky in Winners and Losers. It's a vote for Mike mm. Graham from me. Mm. David says, tell the plank that Carl Frotch did not retire undefeated. He was beaten by Andre Ward. I know Mike that. Perry useless I, again. I know that. You weren't listening. What I said was he retired from boxing as undefeated at the time. Yeah, well, so what, I'm, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying he wasn't is, undefeated at the he time. didn't get beaten in his last fight and then decided to throw in the towel no, and quit. But he didn't he, retire undefeated. He quit at the top of his game after a terrific victory. I see. Pete said, well, yeah. like about a year later. No. Pete says, mm. yeah, well, over a year later. No. Porky's scraping the barrel with his winners and losers this week. Rubbish. Hashtag useless. Mm. No, no, no. I th- I, I, I've seen all these, and I'm telling you, you weren't following me properly. I never said Cole Frutch was undefeated. I said that he didn't retire after a defeat. I mean, you know, that's totally different. And really? uh, just get uh, get that into your head, okay? Yeah, well, okay. No. And, we'll, and as I say, it's retweet for you this time, yep. and it's favourite for me. Yeah, okay. Well, that's fine by me. Yeah. That's fine by me. Vote often and vote for Porky, okay? Yeah, very. Uh, and one here to win on winners and losers on the attached tweet. Thanks. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, what do you mean you don't uh, know what it means? Well, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure who he's telling people to vote for. Right, now then, what I want to tell you about is this. So How far long... it's uh, about 25 for me and 12 for you. Uh, well, that'll soon change, don't worry. That'll soon change. Now, how long is it since I told you that if we ever started to follow the Mediterranean way of life, yeah. our economy will collapse and crumble and be as bad as Spain and Italy. Um, I can't remember how long ago it was. Well, it was, but I've told you that, haven't I? No. I've told you that. No, I've haven't. told you. I said, if we adopt the lifestyle of, you know, the so-called, uh, you know, Mediterranean countries, yeah. you know, eating all the uh, sort of salads they eat... And, Eating um, salad, you think, is going to bring the economy to its knees? And adopting the Have lifestyle. lost the plot completely? Adopting the lifestyle. And the thing I pointed out most about their lifestyle was the fact that the shops are, open, uh, are not open all day and that they all go out eating at 11 o'clock at night, so oh, they yeah. must all be bladdered by the time they wake up for work next morning. But this well, now... because no, they don't drink the way you do. This they now... They actually drink uh, in moderation. This now has taken a very sinister turn. A go Spanish on. mayor is taking a stand against the threat posed by the pace of the 21st century and has ordered compulsory three-hour siestas in his town. How can you have a compulsory siesta? Exactly, exactly. I mean, can you see where they're coming from, these continentals? They just don't want to do any work. These continentals? Yeah, they want to lie around sleeping. Are still living in the 50s? No, they want to lie... Continentals? That's what they are. Continentals? Well, they're from the continent. The continent, are they? Yeah, you idiot. Well, That's you what still, continentals are. You still co- No, actually, we're linking continentals a car. You know the most famous headline the Times ever published, don't you? Go it, on. It was, uh, d- uh, this was in the 50s. Mm. Dense fog in channel, continent cut off. Yeah. That was the, that was the right. great headline. Yeah, well, we don't call it the continent anymore. Well, I do, I do. Anyway, anyway, listen to this. It's like when you used to see those, uh, those signs in the toilet, you know, where somebody would write something mm. like, um, mm. 
you know, Manchester United for the continent. Yeah. Was meaning they wanted them to go into Europe. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. And then somebody would write underneath Torquay for the incontinent. Yes, I that's right. I thought that was really funny. Yeah, well, yeah, I think that's rather juvenile, actually. <laughs> Very juvenile. Anyway, um, so Johan Faust Vittoria, who is the mayor of Ador, that's A D O R. Isn't, ne- that, isn't that some kind of um, place in Lord of the Rings? No, no, Ador near Valencia. Valencia. Right? Yeah, Valencia. Valencia has introduced a bylaw to enshrine an official snooze slot mm. between 2pm and 5pm each day in the I summer months. I quite like months. that, actually, because I quite often sleep between 2 and 5. Children are banned from playing outside, music must be turned down, and television's put on a low volume while adults take 40 winks, OK? Yeah. Oscar Mascarell, a local police officer, calls over a loudspeaker at 1.30pm every day to tell residents, prepare to take siesta from 2 o'clock. I mean, this is outrageous. Why is it outrageous? It's no wonder the economy of Spain has collapsed. Well, one, it's and not, it's still collapsing. One, it's got nothing to do with you. Two, of course it has. It's not happening in it's a country. It's got everything to do with me. It's not happening in a country in which you live. So why is it any of your business what they do? Because they want to borrow money from England to prop up their economy. No, they don't. Yes, they, they, they might do. Want to borrow money from the European Union. Yeah, well, that's the same thing. Now then. It says the streets remain deserted oh, yeah. as many of Ador's 1,500 residents take to their beds. The siesta is regarded as a religion in the village, according to the local newspaper Levante. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is outrageous. I'll tell you what, I once went on holiday, right, yeah. uh, to uh, to Spain, and I rented yeah. uh, I rented a villa mm. in northern Spain. Mm. And it was somewhere, I mean, was it exactly? It was somewhere between Barcelona and the French border. Really. Right, right. But it was in a medieval village, right? Yeah. And we were told uh, that you had to drive up this sort of mountain road to get to it. And we yes. got this medieval village, and we had to ask for this guy called Pedro. Right. Who was going to be the guy that would show us how to use it. That's his it. real name, Pedro. Pedro, yeah. Sure, that's not a, a mocking name you gave Spanish him. Spanish for Peter. To demean him. Oh, no, Spanish for Peter. Good God. Anyway, yeah. drove, uh, drove the car up, and uh, it was when I was married, and, and we had uh, my daughter, who was very small, went into, mm. checked into this place, but couldn't find Pedro. Couldn't mm. find, not only not, couldn't find Pedro, couldn't mm. find anyone. Right. Literally nobody. This whole village seemed like it was deserted. Yeah. Right? Like and something out of the prisoner. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. And, and streets were all cobbled and mm. there weren't any other cars. Mm. And we parked the car and we, and we and it was a lovely place, mm. but it was on four levels and a beautiful sort of garden with lots of bees and, right. and, 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 and you know, all sorts yeah. of foliage, right? And um, it wasn't until uh, the third or fourth day that thing, because the, the, the big worry was the water pump. And they said, you know, right. the thing you must master is the water pump right. in order to get the water all the way up to all the floors. By the time we'd ended up, by the end of the week, mm. the only place we'd get water was on the ground floor. Right. And so we couldn't get it up to the... So we just had to keep moving down and down and down. Okay. And on the final day, before we were due to leave, I was awoken by this really big noise. And mm. there, was a, there was a sort of square outside this place. And bear right. in mind, we'd seen nobody, right? For right. the whole week, no one. Good God. And suddenly there was about 100 people mm. all gathered in this little square. What were they doing? Having some kind of town meeting. Right. And they were all gibbering, jabbering. Where'd they be? Well, I don't know. That's what I don't well, didn't know. didn't you bother finding out? You're supposed to be a, you know, a secret truth and justice type person. No, that's you. Bit, yeah, I am. That is me. But you're supposed to well, be a I trained observer. I looked out the window and I'm like, where are all these people come from? Yes. And then um, I sort of, you know, didn't didn't go out and, and challenge them because, no. you know, they all were very, you know, sort of rural Spanish types. And jolly English. And, uh, and then they disappeared. And then when we left, we never saw anybody. We never saw Pedro the whole week. Never saw any other people in the village. Weird experience. I know, it was strange. But why didn't you challenge him and find out what was going on? Well, nobody, there was nobody no, to talk but to. But I would have found out what was going on. That's why I was such a brilliant reporter. You just Never made Never evaded me. No, I didn't. Now, yeah, let, did. me, let me tell you how dangerous this is all getting, right? Mm. Salvador Farré, a resident, said... Farré. Farré. Are you sure that's not a French pronunciation? No, it's Farré. A resident said, I think this is a great idea because you can eat and then go for a sleep straight after. You have a more... Peaceful siesta. That's not a good idea. I mean, though. these people are just lazy gits. No, they, that's they, not. They, they, that's, they like no, to spend that, no, the middle of the day that. eating, and then they go, I'd go lying down and I, not do any work. I don't think there's anything wrong with they Spanish lifestyle. They don't want to do any work. I don't think there's anything wrong with the Spanish lifestyle. Also, it's very hot there. Don't forget. So, I mean, if you were living there, you'd actually do much better to stay behind the shutters <laughs> yeah. and not go out in the middle of the day. <laughs> Listen to this. You won't believe this. I've What's just this? found out. There's an organisation in Spain. Yeah. This just about sums up their attitude to life and why mm. their economy's collapsing and why we'll have to keep bailing them out. Many Spaniards fear that the rush of modern life is leasing... Le- Sorry, what are you doing blowing your nose? I've got, I've got, I've got a sort of irritation going on. Not like a, like a hay fever? I think so. Well, it's a studio fever, I think. It's when I come in here. Right. Let me finish this, right? This Get is the salient point of the story. Of Many Spaniards fear that the rush of modern life is leaving less time to take a nap in the afternoon. Get this. The National Association of the Friend of the Siesta was formed five years ago to promote the tradition. 
I mean, what kind of a country has an organisation called the Friend of the Siesta? Why don't they just call it, you know, the Friend of the um, the uh, Work Shy or the Friend of the Lazy? I think you're being very or, harsh. Or, or the Friend of the Indolent. Why don't they call it that? The Friend of the Siesta. Honest to God, we weren't put on earth to get up in the morning potter around for a few hours and then go to sleep all afternoon after having a huge lunch. Well, that one, was not what well, we were on. put on earth well, one for. One of the things that I like about Spain, yeah. which you won't have known about because you yeah. won't have been up or awake at this time of night, but yes. you can go shopping at 10 o'clock at night. Yes, you, I know You that. know, you can take your kids out much later yeah, on that. at night. You I know, know the cities don't become no-go I areas. I know There are not loads of drunken Brits lying around unless you go to the British holiday resort. Yes. And in fact, I find the, the, the timings of mm. the way that the mm. Spanish live, particularly the big cities, are very, very sort of um, seductive, I would say. No, it's not, it's not the way we live our life here. We well, don't want that. Well, maybe we should. We don't want that. No, and then we'll end up with an economy like Spain's, no, which agree. is bankrupt. Now, listen, before you go, economy. because we're nearly out of time here, right. did you see that amazing crash uh, in the Tour God, de France yesterday? I, I didn't know how the guy even got off, let, let, Thomas. let alone went back into goes, the race. goes into, like, a telegraph pole Unbelievable. about 40 miles an hour. But did you see how he came off the road? It yeah. seemed to be for no reason to well, me. Well, no, what happened was well, he was trying to turn. they're all going round the yeah. bend, and he goes straight over. No, well, what happened was he was trying to turn, mm. and it was quite a tight turn, mm. and a guy to his right, mm. who he obviously didn't see, mm. literally, as he was trying to turn, bumped into him. Mm. And it mm. was a bit like being in bumper cars, you know, yeah. trying to turn around the corner. Well, yeah, he off the road, yeah. And at that speed, there's mm. nowhere to go. The only thing that was fortunate, I suppose, yes. was that um, it wasn't a massive sort of cliff that you went over. Well, that's right. Um, and there weren't mm. too many people standing mm. there. He, was able, mm. he went through this little bit where there was nobody actually standing. Yep. But the fact that amazed me mm. was that after hitting this telegraph pole and people didn't mm. actually know what happened to him, no. it turned out he then rejoined the race. He did. And he's, and he's, he's standing at six in the race. And his, and his and quote is, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. feeling, I'm feeling all right now. Yeah. I suppose the doctor will ask me my name and date of birth soon. So, mm. I mean, with mm. all this talk of concussion, yeah. You do wonder if yeah. he did get concussed yeah. and he wasn't examined, yeah. isn't that a bit dangerous? Well, he, I know he will have been examined, I think. Well, I don't know. I don't, think, I don't get that impression. But I, I, I agree with you. The, the force of the impact of him on that tree or that telegraph pole or whatever seemed horrendous to me. It did. I, di- I didn't think he would wake up. I didn't, honestly. Mm. You know, fortunately he did. Yeah, thank mm. goodness for that. Anyway, mm. and he's a member of the Sky team, of course, so uh, we'll keep you updated on all of that uh, throughout the day and throughout the uh, Tour de France as well. Uh, now, tomorrow night, it's uh, Ask Porky, of course, mm-hmm. on the show. Uh, I'll see you at one o'clock again. And uh, if you want to have a look at the picture of Porky trapped in a locked room, uh, that's on uh, at the two mics. I've tweeted it as well, mm. at IROMG. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, the winners and losers. Retweet for Mike Parry. Favourite for me. Mm. Current standings, 27 to you, uh, 39 for me. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's yeah, where well, that His scrotum area. What? On his penicular structure and his... Penicular structure? Yeah, yeah and scrotum his... Scrotum area? And, and his scrotum <laughs> bag, right... 